Welcome to the Goods from the Woods. My name is Rivers Langley. I'm Sam Harder. And today we are so pleased to be joined once again by our buddy. What's up, goddamn it, Seth Pomeroy? <laughs> What's up, America? What's up, America? I'm laughing in your fucking face. <laughs> What's up, world? What's, What's up, world? world? Y'all uh, handle the world. I got America's back. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have America's back. <laughs> I disowned it a long time ago. Well, uh, uh, speaking of the world, <laughs> I was at a uh, gas station down the street uh, trying to get my uh, my backpack that we uh, discussed uh, earlier on the show fixed and uh, wandered in this gas station and I found a product that is almost entirely in Japanese. The only English words on the front, uh, uh, Sammy, go ahead and read the, uh, the English on the front there. <laughs> oh, I wanted to check the date. I'm, it just says uh, every burger. Yes. And it does say the word bourbon at the top. Yeah, right. yeah. I think that might be the company yeah, that I makes think it. Yeah, so too. But uh, I legitimately have no clue what this is. I was like, well, Ooh. I, you know, it's ne- it was next to like the Japanese Kit Kats. Like they have the matcha mm. flavored Kit Kats. Oh yeah, so. that's good shit too. I think it's going to be something sweet. It might be... Uh, I, when I looked at the, the package, gummy? I saw the burgers. It looked like... I thought it was going to be the gummy. I'm looking at the back. Uh-huh. It says a Japanese cookie. Oh, it's a cookie. Okay. Oh. See, I didn't even read the, the back. I just saw the front, and I was like, well, this looks gross. I we should eat was, one of these. Yeah, gummy, no doubt, I thought. <laughs> yeah, because we're so used to the burger gummies here in America. <laughs> That's true. This fucking country is brainwashed <laughs> yeah, when it comes to burgers. But yeah, Any uh, form. I'll throw a picture of this up on our, uh, on our X so people can... What store did you get this at? This was at the, uh, what is that, a shell at... And they uh, fixed backpacks uh, also. Well, next, <laughs> next, next door to it. Uh, so there's a shoe repair store that fixes backpacks next door. Uh, and uh, I, know, yeah, I know where this is. It's 7th seven, seven, <laughs> in Vermont. And uh, yeah, but then I went into... <laughs> just come back and it's a bunch of shoelaces. Tied. Like, what the fuck is Yeah, I, I went in there and there was a, a woman screaming at the cashier. Like, I think she was trying to walk out of there without paying 75 cents for a drink and he was like you can't take that he was she was just like fuck you and like they were yelling wow. back and forth so i just was like i'll buy whatever she's getting to so the yelling can stop you <laughs> should have been like hey wilshire in vermont's down there that's where all the yelling normally happens yeah, I mean, you need to go building. about three blocks away <laughs> and you can yell at everyone yeah, that's right just don't isolate it in the store well i think they you know wilshire in vermont had too many people on the uh, on the yelling team so yeah, she can all get her she got she she got drafted down to Seventh Street, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so. lady, the parking lot where you can buy any drug is two blocks south of here, yeah. according to the man on the bus. That's right. He really hammered in any drug when he told me this, and this isn't a joke. This man was I on bet. the bus. He told me that you could buy any drug in this parking lot after dark. Ooh. Guess what? Oh, I was yeah. I was on the train the other day. There's a coked out man. Word? Yeah, wearing uh, glasses. No lenses. Mm. Wearing pajama pants. Fuck wearing yeah. wearing sandals with socks. Guess what his top was? <laughs> A ghillie suit jacket. Whoa, fuck the kind yeah. of snipers wear. Hell high yeah. in the grass. Lone <laughs> survivor. <laughs> I mean, that's sort of like he gets various pieces of clothing. Whatever's clean or not covered in oh, blood. Yeah, I mean, pissed. definitely. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the thing I saw, and I was like, damn, you look crazy. But Mad also, Max. that was your available jacket yeah. you could get, so you had to go with yes. it. Yes, every day is laundry day for this man. It's Whoa. Mad Whoa, Max. these are tiny. Whoa. We got to take a picture of oh, that. Jeez. Yeah. Wow, the, the verisimilitude oh, on these great. little burgers. This is fun. Oh, I think it is chocolate. It is like a little yeah. like a macaroon. Oreo. This but is a fun time. Whoa. It tastes like a Kit Kat. Oh, shit, man. Those are good. I'm trying to get a good photo of it, but it's wow. Just, you know. Man, yeah, okay, so okay. yeah, it's like a chocolate-filled cookie, but the chocolate looks like a burger, and then it has actual sesame seeds on top, mm. and then the, it looks like they've sprayed it a little bit to make the bun look toasted. That is mm. amazing. Wow. It probably, it probably is toasted. They probably sprayed some oil and <laughs> sent it through the oven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah God damn. Cookie. It's good right. shit. The Japanese have done it again. Well, <laughs> that's right. McDonald's. Well, well done, slacking. every burger. Uh, man, the, the, the fucking logo looks dope. <laughs> it's, I mean, shit, it sold you. I mean, it got me. I was like, <laughs> I just have to know. Because I was like, there's not a 0% chance that this is actually little tiny hamburgers that somehow. Would be awesome. That's what I was kind of thinking. I that's was like, what I want. I was like, it's probably not, but the chances are yeah. not zero. I want fucked up freeze dried uh, cheeseburgers. <laughs> yes. I want to pick up. Summer <laughs> sausage, <laughs> fucking yeah. Yeah. processed bread. Ooh, yeah. buddy. It's don't, the future. Give me what I want. Don't threaten me with a good time, goddammit. Well, uh, something that may or may not be a good time is uh, this week. movie Strays in theaters. <laughs> <laughs> if you oh. want to see some dogs curse, this is the movie you got to go see. 
see it? The fuck no. I'm never going to see that bullshit. <laughs> I don't know. It I looks like believe... the worst movie in the fucking world. <laughs> I wanted to believe that interaction you had with that guy was on the way over <laughs> straight. <laughs> and you're like, man, today is fucking sucking. Yeah, dude. <laughs> any drug that's going to make Will Ferrell and Jamie Foxx so right. much funnier the that's second right. time I see strays in theater. I love it. That's why the lady was yelling at the attendant at the <laughs> <laughs> where I got the every burger. <laughs> yeah, he's like, give me my 75 cents. I yeah. saw strays. I'm trying to get the strays. God <laughs> damn right. it. These dogs are talking. Yeah. Uh, I, I also wonder like if what like the flow chart of like how often they think that kind of thing's going to make money. Were they like talking animals? This so they is, try it every like decade. What, Dude, what do people gotta, like dogs? <laughs> this yeah. has got to be a money laundering yeah, scheme. Yeah, movie. Totally. Yeah. They're they're like we need to move around some money. We we, we like Will and Jamie. Yes. We'll throw them a bone. Totally. Yeah. And uh, we'll literally throw them a bone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, we will uh, have the worst movie ever. Dogs will do drugs. <laughs> yeah. Go, Whoa, Whoa! I'm a dog right. and I'm tripping out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's more Love funny because I'm a dog. Of when I, it is. When I saw Cocaine Bear in theater. Theaters, and I think they're produced by the same people. People were mm. there was a guy who was laughing extremely hard at the Strays trailer, <laughs> specifically the part where they <laughs> ate mushrooms. Uh, I saw that trailer for something else. The same sh- that the audience was like, "Holy shit, these yeah. dogs are on drugs!" <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "You've seen this scene a hundred times. Dogs <laughs> aren't supposed to do yes. that." <laughs> like, I, well, he thinks the tree <laughs> is a fire hydrant. I, I, I also <laughs> laughed very hard at it, but just in the, like the meta way of like. This is what we're doing now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, what the yeah. Fuck? yeah. No one knows what's selling, but we know animals still work. So right, like right. talking animals. And, and people that? say they don't make good comedies anymore. I That's know. Just right. good, lighthearted strays, baby. Yeah. <laughs> what if it's good and we're all idiots right now? <laughs> yeah, that's what we really should revise this when we both watch it on VOD stoned if, and like now is actually kind one of, of those funny. trailers where they only show the worst <laughs> parts for some reason. Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, so it's sitting at fifty six percent on Rotten Tomatoes, but that's the fucking loser cuck yeah. ass. Critics. That's right. Yeah, seventy percent according to the audience. That's yeah. right. We're laughing. This dog's peeing. Yeah, he's on acid. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> How much money did this movie make? Uh, I don't know yet. Let's see. Who directed the him? fucking movie? Too? I want to know who yeah. sold out their career forever. We're making <laughs> a like... list of people to boycott. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they do live in this town. We'll find you. Oh no! It's <laughs> Lord and Miller. No, oh, they, they produced, produced it, it. but they, they, that means they have distance to the product. Yeah, so also uh, produced Cocaine Bear. Yeah, who directed yeah. the fucking? Uh, well, I'll look it up. You, Josh Greenbaum. Oh, who, that's a name, real name. He's done something. Uh, yeah, yeah. So also known for uh, the documentary about the Dana Carvey show. Oh, that was great. But yeah. I mean, that's a documentary. I've made one of those. <laughs> Anyone can do that. <laughs> that's fucking. I've I mean, done that. Two of those. That's yeah. not a problem. Oh fuck! You did Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, okay, so he's sort of just getting a paycheck probably while yeah. the acting. That world falls apart. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jamie Foxx has a stroke yeah, or whatever. All these, <laughs> like, all these guys <laughs> were told the fucking strike was coming oh, a year yeah. ago, and they're oh, like, yeah. "Okay, we'll get a project." Oh, he's in. done nothing but good stuff too. This is uh, this is like probably what I'm gonna end up doing. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, hey, this guy made two great docs. He made one inspired comedy, and then fucking stray. Yeah, <laughs> and um, then he never worked again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this so, is my career. Pretty sure uh, I'm looking at right 20, in the barrel. Twenty one point four million dollar box office against a forty six million God dollar damn. budget. So. <laughs> Not great. Or nice. should I say, woof. <laughs> woof. There you go. <laughs> Insert dog sound. Effect. Or should I say, fuck. Because that's what the dogs say in this movie. <laughs> or should I say, fuck, that's I'm incredible. on mushrooms. Oh, my God. That's I'm the best on review of mushrooms. All time. Uh, <laughs> fuck, yeah. Get in the spirit. Say fuck like these dogs do. <laughs> Quit criticizing the storytelling. <laughs> Get on this dog page. Like I said, I don't, I don't know wow. if this is going to be a good time, as good a time as Strays, but uh, we're going to give it a Nothing whirl anyway. Uh, <laughs> this, this is our ungodly concoction <laughs> for the day. And it is called Gorilla Mind. Fuck yeah. I hope I just turn into a gorilla and trash this room in, in fucking, seconds of drinking it. I'm going to fucking take a stick and stick it into an ant pile and get yeah, the yeah, ants yeah, off yeah, a stick. Yeah, fuck yeah. I got the Gorilla Mind, Yeah, baby. I got the Gorilla Mind. I'm covered in dirt and I'm eating shit. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Life's Journey found me at the vitamin shop uh, in West Hollywood where I ended up buying so many energy drinks they gave me a, a, a reusable bag. Okay. Uh, Free ambulance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We'll pay for it just if you're going to drink all of these. Yeah, so this was in that hall, and, uh, you know, Gorilla Mind, the first thing that comes to my mind is there was a uh, a book written by a, uh, you know, right-wing sort of proto-incel influencer by the name of Mike Cernovich about maybe seven, eight years ago called Gorilla Mindset. Oh, shit. And I was like, oh, my God. This drink, bro? Is this Mike Cernovich's <laughs> drink? Who you give your money to? 
Uh, so it turns out, no, it's okay. actually a Canadian man named Derek Munro. Okay. Who, I like that name. It, it, seems it's, fine. it seems fine, but he runs a company <laughs> called More Plates, More Dates. Hell what does that yeah. mean? Uh, dude, so, yeah, if you don't know, you're such a beta <laughs> cut. If you can't just hear those words <laughs> and figure plate. it out, <laughs> you're an idiot. What, like you get metal plates in your body, the more you get, the, the more, more women want to fuck you? The more you lift, the more chicks you get. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even know they called weights plates. Yeah, so each one, of, each one of those weights you put on your bar is called <laughs> Too Busy call. Watching Dudes Fuck Your yeah, Girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, you got it right. Don't I know am. shit don't about the gym. Me. I'll well, shame my grill of mine. Oh, <laughs> Seth over here. Not <laughs> clanging, not banging. No, all right. I um, had no idea we had to bang plates. Yeah, so, <laughs> so this Look is. Look at this piece of shit. This oh, is the guy. like Alan Cumming, that's the photo, actor. That's like Photoshop to shit. <laughs> oh, too. my God. He looks like a fucking 1990s uh, image comic book. Well, first of all, that, <laughs> fucking that picture is Photoshop. The background is Photoshop. Uh huh. That The lighting of him and the background do not match at all and that's why it's super blurry <laughs> yes you're right and he's super defined yeah well this is Derek monroe and first of all uh and he's a roid maniac he is absolutely a roid <laughs> he maniac it's fucking horrible and another thing just in terms of people that are ruining the brains of like adolescent to like 20 to 30 something year old men in america oh yeah Andrew this, Tate fellas. right fucking this motherfucker's from canada too mm. it's like hey man you quit. should know better he's they send us steven crowder they send him mm. send us jordan peterson now they send us this motherfucker he he likes on. dates. He likes having a lot of dates. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's I really think, what got that's him the off thing course. incels don't understand. If you're going on a lot of dates, they're probably not going. <laughs> you shouldn't be. Oh. You shouldn't be dating so much that you're like, oh wow, I meet a new girl oh, all the time, dude. And it just never happens. They just never want to keep talking. To yes, me. I don't know what the deal is. I put so many plates on the barbell. <laughs> he said more plates, more dates. I don't. <laughs> this guy, I was at a Birds the other night, and this guy was talking to the bartender I was paying out, and he was like. He He's like, you know, I'm really good at dating. I mean, like, I'm great at dating. I'm not great at commitment, but I'm really <laughs> good at dating. You know, I just, my personality, I love to sh just share things I'm reading, sh th share things I'm interested in. And I sort of just, I just sort of let myself just free to talk. And they're just sort of always just a little bit like too impressed with me. And, and that's right when I was paying out. And I was like, God damn, they're not paying you enough yeah. to look this man in the eye and be like, yeah, like it's normal what he's saying. Like, oh, oh my God. The fact that someone is speaking in a way that just sounds like a script is like, uh, it's just so sad it's, that man is. It's cool that he's like oh. right on the verge of acknowledging that he talks too much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but for he's me, like it's right about, there. Yeah, it's a virtue he's, for me. But he's, other yeah. People, yeah. 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 Other exactly. people just can't stand how cool I am. I know. And he's like, and they're so, they get too enamored with me. Or it's too, <laughs> I was like, I'm getting the fuck away from you, <laughs> psycho. Also, you're in fucking Hollywood. This is not, no one is enamored with you, man. There yeah. are a lot of people to be enamored no. with. See, they're the, not you. Uh, oh, you live in Hollywood and you read <laughs> yeah. and consume media? Wow. wow. And, and you like to talk about yourself? <laughs> so does everyone, See, the, asshole. The, the problem is they become blinded by the sexual fireworks. Mm. Uh, you know, oh, the, yeah, I know. Now, let me tell you about my cyborg <laughs> love movie. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what was next. Yeah. yeah, 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 of course. Or he was like, yeah, I've done UCB. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you, whatever, you know, whatever he was going to claim that he has a They didn't dominance. put me on a house team because they didn't understand <laughs> the meta shit exactly. I was doing. Yeah. I don't play the games the way other people do. It's like, well, that's what it is, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Anyways. So, yeah, this is uh, this is made by uh, that, that guy, uh, uh, he's, well, he's the CEO of uh, Gorilla Minds. I admire his pussy and, getting techniques. I, well, that's, <laughs> sorry. That's the thing is I was looking at, you know, things for him online as far as because this yeah. everything about this man reeks of what Carter uh, called uh, Sage Against the Machine, <laughs> what other folks call conspirituality, oh, where it's good. like, oh, my God, where is the, you know, anti-vax or like, you know, the yeah, government is reptiles. Where, do, where does my grift want to, sure. where do I want to pinpoint the dart <laughs> on yeah. this grift? Well, yeah, yeah. So as best I can tell, it hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. So this guy is still successful enough with the shit that he's doing in terms of just being like a fitness influencer sure. that he hasn't made the heel turn yet. Oh, So I I have a Google alert set up for Derek Monroe <laughs> and uh, phrases like, uh, you know, QAnon, conspiracy, uh, oh all that good stuff. So when it happens, yeah. I will keep the Studiverse abreast of the situation. <laughs> I if, love it. Let's make yeah. it back. If we this emailed this support at GorillaMind.com. 
Facebook.com, we would probably, he would respond, right? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, he's fairly like well known oh, in, in this in this sphere. Yeah. How many followers does he have? 898,000 for more plates, more dates. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, That's you know, like good night. More followers, night, right? more plates, more dates. Yeah. What's his story? Right Click now. his story. Yeah. We want to see his story. story. Let's see what this <laughs> fucking piece of shit is. Oh, that's not him. <laughs> He's like, this is what I looked like before. Let's go. <laughs> Gorilla Mind Energy Drinks uh, uh, at the Vitamin Shop. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Thank you, Gorilla Mind. Thank you, freaking oh. Vitamin Shop. Thank you. Thank you, God. A guy. Who, oh my! Whoa. Oh no! That guy doesn't seem good. A guy who definitely <laughs> consumes energy drinks like me and Rivers Woo. does yeah. not exercise on them at all. <laughs> and he was at the store you were at, correct? Uh, it's, uh, well, no, it's, it's always a different, a different it's a vitamin. chain store. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, he's got back knee pictures on here. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Hey, he's opening himself up. He's telling you. Like, I mean, he's journey. telling you his, like his journey. Of... There is a ton of shit on here about steroids, so he is at least open about it. You know. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, in a, I, I, this is something I've only come to grasp in the last couple months. <laughs> Is the gym workout guys is a form of autistic obsession for a lot of sure. these people. Oh, yeah, they're, sure. they're not good I at bet. talking. They're not good at talking to people. They're not good at talking to women specifically. So uh, it's easy to like break down fat percentages and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what's in all the supplements and all that shit. Yeah, when you don't have any friends. Exactly. And you have yes. so much time on your hands. Absolutely, yeah. It's just another form of obsession. And I'm not saying working out is bad or knowing all this stuff is bad, but there's a level. You can tell this guy's mind is ruined by <laughs> yeah. workout stuff. Yeah. He's really, I mean, he's made it his mission to sell Rivers this bullshit and that Whoa. other guy. <laughs> well, so what's different about this one, and first of all, the, the flavor we got, uh, I couldn't resist. It's Tiger Blood, oh, which just reminds Charlie me of going Sheen. to the snow cone place yeah, when you're a kid, and that was the, always the good flavor. <laughs> is that right? Charlie Sheen is all that. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but this thing has something I've never seen before, which is on the back, underneath the nutrition facts, the Gorilla Mind Energy Matrix. <laughs> Into the Matrix. And it <laughs> the just multiverse has, of vitamins. And it just has a bunch of unpronounceable shit, and it's uh, got lots of it in there. So. It and it's got saffron extract. Oh, so this it, probably hey. cost a million dollars. Ooh, yeah, that's that's saffron, quality. the most expensive spice oh, there yeah. is, Oh, yeah. I think guys. it's the most expensive just substance, basically. Yeah. Yeah. What about fentanyl? Uh, well, oh. <laughs> Dude, the fent I bought this week was so cheap, bro. No, I think yeah, saffron is this is probably is cool. worth more so. than its weight in gold. Like, uh, Damn. Yeah. yeah. Well, I had some saffron ice cream at the fucking Mashi Malone's. At Mashi Malone's, yeah, yeah, so yeah. That was pretty rich. Yeah, yeah hell yeah. <laughs> uh, <Deliciousness. laughs> but yeah, let's kick it off with this energy matrix. Here we go. I want you to replace that with a Matrix sound effect. <laughs> yeah. We're jacking it. <laughs> yeah. Damn it, it's clear. Always disappointing when it's clear. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a yellowy clear. Maybe that's just reflecting off the No, you're right. It's, uh, yeah, it's got a little champagne It's a vibe. dirty clear. <laughs> dirty clear. Dirty clear. That's a good name for a van. <laughs> that's when you do Scientology, but the wrong way. I'm clear, but <laughs> do dirty it in a hotel clear. With a prostitute. Yeah. It doesn't smell good. I don't know. I think it smells I right. Pretty hardcore flavor there. Holy shit. I like it. <laughs> it's too. I don't like coconut this much. That's exactly what I was thinking. I forgot that's I what Tiger Blood up. is. It's like it's cherry and coconut. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wasn't raised properly, folks. I don't know. You didn't never go to <laughs> <laughs> I don't know shit about childhood. You didn't go to Snow Biz? <laughs> oh, okay. I've been to one of those, though, in New Orleans. Yeah. Is that what you're yeah. talking about? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that place is fucking great, but I went there as a 36-year-old man. <laughs> I mean, hey, it still holds <laughs> yeah. up. It still holds yeah, up. Yeah, I was eating candy just the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're just like ever clear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also. yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, this thing, uh, I, I actually like this taste a lot. I think if I had some ice in here, it'd be just about fucking perfect. It's so. strong. I don't like this. I mean, <laughs> nope. I'll drink it, but yeah. I would not ever buy this. Yeah, I feel like if this was really hot, it would just be excruciatingly bad. Well, yeah, obviously. No. That's all of them. No. No, I'm Even a fur it I like way. to warm up my rock stars <laughs> to boil, over ice. <laughs> I like to boil your yeah. Red Bulls before you drink them. <laughs> it, it unlocks the flavor. Yeah, that's good. Some psycho's doing that. Yeah, I, you guys are again it. I'm for yeah. it. I love it. I love the branding. I love the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I love where he's coming from. I need more Derek. <laughs> he yeah, does yeah. seem like a guy who one day is like going to convince <laughs> you why you should drink your own urine. Absolutely, right. and, that's what know. I'm saying. He's headed there. He's got to yeah crack the mainstream just a little to be able to pull that off. Yes, he's well, almost there. Yes, yeah, because he's like right there. Yeah, he's almost, once he kind of yeah. gets a certain level, if he goes back down, that's when your brain boils. Absolutely. Uh, as far as I could tell, his uh, you know his only like transgression is just he did an incredibly long Joe Rogan episode. 
episode that I was like, no, I'm not listening. To oh, this. he did? It's so long. Oh, I was, he was like, trying to break in. What could like, this guy possibly have long. to fucking say for two and a half hours? <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, he's talking to Joe Rogan. They're yeah. not, they never say much. That's yeah. true. Yeah. They'll, they'll find ways to <laughs> barely talk. Like, I was curious. I was like, maybe there's some conspiracy shit, but I was like, I can't, I can't in good consciousness sit here and listen and to no, this I'm shit. I'm sure it's just two semi on the spectrum guys talking supplements. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Lifting. Yeah. Hor- hormones. And mindset. Yeah. They love a mindset. <laughs> the dumb guys love a mindset. Yeah. They need to be told how to think. Oh, yeah. That's true. Yeah, the body is a temple and the mind yeah. is to be shaped by anyone. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, I don't know. You guys seem like you're rating it low. I'm going to go ahead and yeah. give this... Uh, it's, I'm going to say four stars for it's me. It's lo- lower than average so, to yeah. me. Yeah, I, I think so. I would say two. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big coconut head. So. I've had more enjoyable energy <laughs> drinks in this I like uh room. I like uh, the coconut, so I'm uh, I'm on board. Oh, well, enhanced memory. Oh, I am having some flashbacks. <laughs> yeah. so Wait a second, was that my priest or was that my teacher? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta talk to Derek. What's his name? <laughs> Ask him directly. I've got a tiger by the tail. It's plain to see. I won't be much when you get through with me. Well, I'm a losing weight and I turn mighty pale. Looks like I got a tiger by the tail. So last week we uh, lost a couple of legends in the uh, wrestling world. Uh, first up, uh, of course, uh, Wyndham Rotunda, also known as Bray Wyatt, uh, one of just the most creative people to ever step foot between those four ring posts there. Passed away at a very, very young age. I believe he's 36 years old, which Damn. really sucks. Had a had a pre-existing uh, heart condition that was uh, kind of made worse by COVID and died Ooh. of a heart attack. So that really, really sucks. Uh, and uh, we actually, uh, I got on the phone with our co-host Emeritus, Dr. Pat Riley up in uh, Canada, and we talked about uh, Bray Wyatt and this other gentleman I'm going to bring up for about two hours. That's over on our Patreon. You can listen to that now. But uh, the other guy that passed away in the wrestling world, Terry Funk, who in this case, this was a triumph, not a tragedy at 79 years old, which is an old age for a wrestler. And he just stopped wrestling like five years ago. Straight up. (laughs) So (laughs) Terry Funk, his first match was in December of 1965. Wow. He wrestled a guy that we actually did an entire episode on. He wrestled Sputnik Monroe uh, in December of 1965. Last in-ring appearance was in 2017. So at a boy, straight up wrestled across <laughs> six fucking decades. A lot of plates, no dates. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, oh, <laughs> no time for dating. If you look at his body, there's never a lot of plates. <laughs> yeah. Terry Funk. No, well, there doesn't <laughs> need to be. No, no exactly. He didn't, I'm not saying he needed. <laughs> He's them, a. Sh- <laughs> he was a straight up crazy person. Yeah, and yeah that's that good. was, and you know, at a time in which. People thought this shit was real. When you watch his promos from Memphis in the even like as late as the eighties, yeah. you can literally see the audience like taking steps back because they're like, "This guy is f- out of his fucking mind." Yeah, there's literally no telling what this guy will do. And uh, my favorite thread, and we mentioned this uh, when me and Pat talked, but my favorite thread, and I think it's such a good thing to say to somebody: if you're instead of just saying "I'm gonna kick your ass," tell them that and then be like, "I'm gonna move here." <laughs> <laughs> that was always the threat as he's like Jerry Lawler I'm gonna move here like I will be in your neighborhood <laughs> right. in your grocery he's stores like, I'll meet to, your kids I'm I'll gonna pay him <laughs> I'm gonna dedicate my life to kicking your ass <laughs> in the form that. of getting a mortgage that's right I'm living next door <laughs> I'm to gonna ass. move here yeah uh, that's good but there was uh, something that we uh, did not bring up because I wanted to save it uh, for the free show just because it's my favorite Terry Funk thing uh, aside from you know outside of wrestling besides Roadhouse which of course oh uh, the movie Roadhouse He's in it. He's legendary. Oh, He's also in rules. Over the Top. Yeah, uh, Dalton's my middle name, God damn it. Is that right? <laughs> yes, it is. I, well, yeah, I have a very weird middle how name. How am I just fine? I know. Are you named for Roadhouse for real? Uh, no, I'm named because okay. of Dalton, Massachusetts. Okay. My grandpa's friend. I was about to lose yeah. my fucking mind. Seth if you Dalton were, Pomeroy. I should be some sort of fucking If you were named for Roadhouse, I would hoist no, you on my I shoulders wish. and carry you out of the room. I have that, the spirit of the Roadhouse inside. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously. <laughs> what I mean. Yeah, yeah, pain don't hurt. You know, you say that all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I said all the fucking time, right? When I kick someone's head clean off yeah. their shoulders. And yeah. you rip their throat out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah. I have it in a wild sex scene against a fireplace with my girlfriend. Yeah, but he's, I mean, he's he's been in, you know, several yeah. movies, Terry Funk, but 
he basically went off and did movies so that he could get a SAG pension in his old age. Hell yeah, smart. So Move. he's in. Uh, he is in uh, Over the Top. I was as gonna well. say that was. I was like, he's got to be in those kind that genre. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah, he yeah. was buddies with Stallone, and the legend goes that he is the guy who recommended Hulk Hogan to Sylvester Stallone to be Thunderlips. So oh, good argument to be true. made. Yeah. Uh, Pat actually told me this. I did not know this, but good argument to be made that Terry Funk is the reason that Hulkamania became a thing ever. Because uh, yeah. that was not on anybody's radar until he mm-hmm. was like, hey, there's this uh, gigantic Floridian Italian man <laughs> that you should uh, get in the ring with <laughs> in this movie. Yeah, But um, no, uh, so, you know, uh, Terry Funk, proprietor of the Double Cross Ranch in Amarillo, Texas, legendary wrestler. He wrestled in six decades as we mention and uh you know he worked at various times for basically every territory and then later every promotion so wwe ecw wcw even uh juggalo championship wrestling you know Fucking a, that's so he cool. never stopped he like, like i just want to do this shit forever. The, like we talked about his <laughs> last his last match in 2017 it is basically you know it's for like big time wrestling it's for some no-name promotion in north carolina wow he just loved this shit but uh sure some mark pays legendary wrestlers yep. to retire uh-huh. 100%. yeah <laughs> yep uh uh, but uh, I want to talk about Japan, and I want to talk about the mm. 80s. So uh, <laughs> Terry Funk's first retirement, quote unquote, which that was kind of his thing. And the recurring joke about Terry Funk was he always retired, and then he'd come back like a year later. Sure. But his famous first retirement was 1983, and that's when he gives the speech that he ends by going, forever, forever. <laughs> um, so uh, that happens. But then a year later, he's wrestling in Japan. Uh, so for a guy named Giant Baba, uh, who runs, he's kind of the Vince McMahon of all Japan pro wrestling. And Terry Funk is fucking huge in Japan. No shit. Because at the time, you know, Japanese wrestling, especially in the 80s, it's very technical. It was very much about, like, you know, respect and honor and, and a, a demonstration mm-hmm. of physicality. And now this fucking maniac yeah, Texan character, <laughs> Yosemite <laughs> Sam, rolls up yeah, in yeah. Tokyo and people are, have never seen anything like this. They're like, who? Who is this guy? Awesome. We fucking love him because he's crazy. And so, uh, yeah, he's 40 years old at this point. And uh, like I said, he already retired once, uh, but he had managed to get himself over as what they call the number one foreigner, Ichiban Gaijin. Wow, uh, the number one foreigner. What a yeah. fucking title. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> like, what's up, bitch? I can eat here on the number that's, one foreigner. And that is, that's still a thing in Japan. So right wow. now, Will Ospreay would be considered the Ichiban Gaijin because he's the, you know, one of the champions of, so uh, of, of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Anyway, uh, in Japan, so there's a there's a Japanese rock band. They are called Creation, and one of their albums actually ranked number 62 on Rolling Stone Japan's list of greatest Japanese rock albums of all time. So this band is like pretty big, and they were huge Terry Funk fans. Uh-huh. And so they offered to make him his entrance theme, which is called Spinning Toehold, and it's fucking awesome. Whoa. <laughs> this is Sounds like King Crimson or something. Yeah, shit. dude. <laughs> Yeah, this is this was Terry's uh, Terry's theme when he came out. This is like stepdad music, uh, dude. Your stepdad's oh, home. <laughs> oh, buddy, you just the kids <laughs> gotta learn. It's about the rhythm. It's about the rhythm, kid. I mean, shredding, dude. Like this, this just sounds like I love uh, it. It sounds like the Sega Genesis hold music for like a wrestling game, totally. almost like you're on the menu screen trying to decide between Million Dollar Man and Papa Shango. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is just playing what's playing in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Like, oh, I mean, yeah. goddamn! One of one of my favorite things ever is like Japanese rock and, and yeah. city pop. It's just the musicianship oh, yeah. is stellar, yeah. and it's almost Western, but not quite. It's yes. like you know, you could still it's definitely always a hear. little too clean, a little too yeah. precise. It, yeah, or exactly. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, this was this is what he used to walk out to the ring yeah. to, and people That's lost their fucking mind. God damn, he walked down the aisle to that shit. Uh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My whole life's gonna be different. Yeah, let's do this. I love you so much, baby. Remember the song edge like, maybe this was a mistake. Uh, <laughs> I was a little excited. <laughs> so Giant Baba, uh, after Terry Funk becomes very successful, he's yeah. uh, obviously you know plugged into the entertainment industry in Japan, and that includes uh, the record industry. And he starts thinking, oh, we've got this very popular wrestler uh you know maybe we should try to capitalize on his success by uh getting him to make an album no 
And oh no! So, Always a mistake for any performer. So Bruce Willis, fucking whoever, <laughs> Kevin Bacon, the, don't make an album. The eighties were a terrible time for <laughs> yeah, this yeah. genre. Yeah. <laughs> well, the eighties is also it, it's also the time in which, and I you know say this as the child of an estate sale broker. I've gone into so many homes that are filled with vinyl records, mm-hmm. and you go through in like the seventies and eighties. It's like there was literally nothing that they wouldn't put on vinyl. <laughs> sure, any fucking it was thing, booming, and they things like, that make no fucking sense. They would put yeah. SNL episodes on vinyl, and you're yeah, like, yeah. it's a visual medium. Why? Uh-huh. You know? Uh-huh. So this this definitely falls into that category. But uh, yeah, so uh, Giant Baba gets him hooked up with Invitation Records, which is a Japanese subsidiary of RCA Victor, and uh, they decide to make an album. So this is, this is Terry Funk's quote about the album. <laughs> quote, I just got very hot over there, and the people love me, so they thought it'd be good to make an album. I can't sing, but they said, oh, no, Terry, you'll be great. <laughs> That's his quote. So oh, yeah. he goes in knowing full well that he can't sing, and uh, but they offered him a shit ton of money. I'd do it. Yeah. And so I'll be singing. <laughs> so he agreed yeah, to it. I mean, Get me in the studio. <laughs> Come on. Another yeah. country. I can fail in another country well, anytime. And that's, that's <laughs> another <laughs> crucial part was <laughs> the, the legend goes that he told the people at the record label. He goes, I'm going to do it. I will take your money. This can never be released anywhere besides Japan. There you this go. doesn't leave this fucking island. <laughs> Get that money. <laughs> but Terry failed to know that uh, YouTube was going to be a thing. Spotify so in the future, yes. It left the island. Old ass man. <laughs> man, you fucked up, Terry. <laughs> Thank God. You um, got your money. So he, anyway, he agrees to make the record, and he decides to hire the only... The only music guy he knows, seemingly the only music guy that any wrestler knows, which is the mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart. Uh, I don't know if I know that is. So uh, Jimmy Hart uh, would be best known as the guy who would always come out with Hulk Hogan, and he had a megaphone. He'd go, oh. come on, Hulk. Come on, baby. Come on, Hulk, baby. Like that. Uh, okay, sure, sure. Jimmy Hart legitimately was he was in a band called the Gentries back in the 60s, oh, and yeah, they okay, had yeah. a, a hit. Uh, you'll always hear wrestlers go, oh, yeah, you had a number one hit. It was a number four hit, but it was called <laughs> Keep On Dancing. Dancing, <laughs> and he was in that band, and so now he's, you know, I guess in their eyes, a legit musician. Sure. So enough. he's involved with all of this wrestling music, <laughs> and Jimmy Hart is very similar to like a Donny Osmond or, or any other person that gets very famous when they're really young. Yeah. He is mentally stuck at that age. Mm-hmm. So all of his songs, even though he's in his like 40s at this point, all the songs he writes are about like teenage rebellion. <laughs> Oh, yeah. um, and oh so God. basically Terry tells Jimmy, he goes, I want nothing to do with this. I'm just going to pay you. You write the whole thing. You get the music going. I'm going to come in and sing the songs. And that's all I'm going to do for this. Mm. And so Jimmy writes, you know, the whole thing. Uh, this is from Terry's uh, memoir, More Than Hardcore. Quote, Jimmy wrote the songs for me because I was too cheap to pay for the rights to songs that people had heard of. And uh, all these songs had one thing in common. They all sucked. <laughs> so wait, <laughs> did they want him to do like a cover album? I, yeah, so I, what I oh think is... Lonely the Lonely. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, that's the thing, because like at the time, you know, this is really the time karaoke is taking off in Japan just oh, as sure. a concept. Which so, is a huge deal. Yeah, so the idea of... And also the idea of a celebrity just showing up and singing popular songs, that's like Ernest Borgnine had a fucking record. You know what I mean? That like rules. <laughs> where it just rolls up the William Shatner famously Lucy oh the sky God. with yes, of diamonds course, of course. like yes. that was already an established thing yeah, but of Terry's a wrestler and wrestlers are the cheapest people on of all time and so he's like alright what's an easier way to do this where I don't have to pay as much it's like oh I'll get Jimmy Hart to write it then I don't have to pay for the rights to whatever stupid song they wanted to sing totally, totally. so that's the plan and uh, <laughs> he uh, wrote the uh, Jimmy Hart wrote the album with a producer and uh, studio guy named Aija Nakahira and on guitar uh, for this record is a guy named Jun Yamagishi uh, who you might know from the TV show Treme. He is oh, really? he was this incredibly successful guitar player in Japan and then in the mid 90s just basically was like I want to go to America and learn the real blues and he still to this day lives in New Orleans and plays in like half a dozen great bands down there. So he's on this record uh-huh. uh, and I got to say going into it like the band kicks fucking ass. Like the music is got nothing to lose. Tremendous. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, cause sure. you know, Japan, this is the height of city pop. This is the height of J rock. Japan is crawling with incredible studio musicians who also 
are all super into wrestling because that's a big sport over there. So they're like, fuck yeah, I'll play bass on Terry Funk's record. Yeah, so no shit. Uh, after the session was over, by the way, the uh, record company gave Terry a guitar and uh, he, as he was leaving Japan, uh, got caught at customs with the guitar and he had a bottle of prescription pain pills and they were actually his prescription, but they saw the guitar and they just assumed he was like a drugged out rock star. Some Paul McCartney character. Bingo. Well, Paul, Paul McCartney <laughs> had had weed. That had happened like four <laughs> yeah, years yeah, earlier. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, they pulled him over. And according to Terry, he got a full cavity search because of this guitar. Whoa. So he's still like mad about the well, He's like embarrassed by it. And he's like, and they looked at my butthole because of my guitar. <laughs> he's like, I can't <laughs> even play the fucking guitar. Yeah, he, he can't. <laughs> that's, that's um, a fucking gift. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so the album itself is called Great Texan. And, uh, yeah, I'm, hell yeah. and, and I'm going to show you what this <laughs> album cover looks like. And you just tell me what you believe believe the music uh, would sound like based on this album cover. Then I'll, I'll put this up on Twitter so people can see it. There's the oh album cover. Terry God, oh looking yeah. fucking resplendent oh, yeah. with a satin jacket uh, and uh, tipping his cowboy hat. And he's got the guitar, presumably the guitar that got him the cavity <laughs> search. I just want to point out that the Japanese like paper they put on the side is covered up half the word. It just says Eat Texan. Eat Texan. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> right. It's a better name for an album. <laughs> Eat Texan. And it's just a... Uh, New York strip on a fucking yeah. rock sizzle. It looks <laughs> like it's going to be some country blues. Right. It's rock. country yeah. Punk, yeah. A fusion between rock and yeah, blues. Yeah, Toby Keith-ish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So a Morgan Wallen type character. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, let's uh <laughs> let's let's take a listen to the first track. This but is it is the 80s. This is, is great. This is great text. Unpredictable. <laughs> it's horny horn music. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's fun. Oh my fuck. It's I mean, the man oh. is named Terry Funk, and they are delivering. This sort of rules, though. Yeah, I know. If, if someone was driving and blaring this other car, you'd be like, That's, they're having fun. Also, he's got. Oh, yeah. They're bringing on. He's got a ring announcer yeah, bringing him good. on. Every record should start that way for this dude. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> this so is like the Playboy channel made a fucking album. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? They're Terry! Like, it's, it's for everyone, is it? It sounds like... Uh, here. You'll fight them every day. There's Jimmy Hart. That's him? That's Jimmy Hart. You'll fight them anywhere. Wow. I'm just sort of He's talking. gonna beat them all the time. <laughs> is he coming himself in third There's person? No one That's Terry. Sounds like a hacky alt comedy oh, yeah. comedy yeah. song. It sounds like a this bad is, Weird Al demo. It's like Andrew Dice Clay's intro at Madison Square Garden or something. Okay, here we go. Of course. That's, yeah. He's uh, Terry. And he's like, ah, yes, indeed I am. Yeah, yeah. Like, what is this song? I'm just here for a paycheck, folks. I'm standing right here. I'm yeah. Terry. Hello. Uh, but yeah. Wow, that's hilarious. Does he actually, is he featured on this at all? Oh, right here. So sad. Oh, oh, oh. People Get think it. I'm so mean. Oh. My heart is soft and sweet. Oh. But I'm still a fighting machine. Wow, no energy at all. <laughs> it's like he's never even heard singing before. <laughs> at all. Yeah. And, and people have pointed out his so the similarity in the timbre of his voice to Hank Hill does make the thing oh, that's even funnier. Funny. Uh, I found twelve bucks in the pocket of my jacket. Yeah, yeah. You're like, what is this singing? <laughs> what is this song about? Oh uh, man, yeah. My I, boots are covered is, this in the, dust. is this the best song off the album? Oh heavens no, heavens no. We're we're working up to the best song, <laughs> but yeah. No, I, I made the note. It sounds like Boney M. If anybody knows the song uh, 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 Rasputin or uh, you know, oh yes, absolutely, yeah, Daddy Cool, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's kind of that like uh -huh. it's it's almost like Euro trash, yeah, like kind of funk, yeah, uh, this would Italo make disco, the Ohio yeah, players cool. vomit. Oh sure, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, Anybody who actually knew Terry Funk was yeah. like, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I wanted to get into. Uh, the rules. There's a track on here that is just deeply strange called Barbara Streisand's Nose. Yeah, I love when it's like concept songs. We yeah, got, we got to fill well, out this record. So the Hulk goes to heaven. Barbara Streisand oh, has a nose. 
man. Whatever. The whole whole Hulk, Hulkster <laughs> yeah. and Evans. Amazing. Yeah, that rolls. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> this is a straight up Jimmy Hart uh, jam because one of the things Jimmy Hart was known to be very good at was taking an existing song and changing it just <laughs> enough so he wouldn't get sued. The Beatles would do this too, but they would never tell anyone they were doing it. Yeah, right, I mean, they right. sort of admitted it in the eighties like, here and there, but yeah. Well, it, like the best example being uh, Diamond Dallas Page's entrance theme song. Mm. Is smells like teen spirit, <laughs> just the last two chords are flipped. Amazing. Self high five. It's straight up the, the same fact fucking that someone song. could do that with a clear conscience is incredible. <laughs> oh, right? yeah. Well, yeah, so, stairway to the hill. It's not <laughs> so <laughs> good. <laughs> Opposite direction, <laughs> I guess. But yeah, I want you to tell me if you can tell me uh, what, uh, and we're going to talk about the lyrics because they're fucking crazy. Mm. But uh, yeah, I did want to uh, play you this. And just tell me if you recognize this tune at all. <laughs> it's going to be pretty hard. And again, keep in mind the year we're talking about. Yeah. So uh, 1984. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh my fucking so, God. That's a shame. So it's beat it, but then listen to the way he sings this song. <laughs> I was listening to my radio. It's Monster Mash meets <laughs> Beat It. <laughs> I'm Grandpa Dracula walking <laughs> to the room. Yeah, he said, hey, young Dracula, <laughs> we have to go to a party. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I wish, it, I know it's not online, but I wish we could find the sales numbers. For oh, this. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, probably half of it went to like the Yakuza or yeah. some shit. He probably like, had a great payment up front and was like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, just no, send it to my house. 100%. Well, I just wonder <laughs> like if anyone was actually a big enough <laughs> fa- funk like, fan where they're I, yeah. like, I need this album. Yeah. yeah, like the Japanese fans like go like this rules because it's a different language anyways, and they like that. I if I if like, I had I mean? like, if I had to guess, because what happens with a lot of these things is the wrestlers would sell them at shows. Mm. So it's not like they would have a chance to like listen to it or know what the fuck it is. It was they on the would, radio. They something. would just come in and be like, Oh, it's a Terry Funk album, I'll buy that. Totally, you know. Totally. So whatever. But yeah, I mean uh, <laughs> it's like Serge Gainsbourg to me. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, it's like a French guy going, right, like, right. I mean, that's impressive to me. Yeah, maybe someone loves this. Uh, but the uh, what if Weird Al ripped this off? <laughs> he was like, "I get it. You take regular songs and twist them just a little bit, yeah, but with the lyrics." <laughs> the the lyrics to this are really confusing. Where he says, "She had Brooke Shields hair. You should have been there, boy. I was surprised." Bo Derek's hips and Mick Jagger's lips and Farrah Fawcett's eyes. Whoa. Dolly Parton's chest. You know that's the best. And <laughs> Herschel Walker's thighs. Whoa. Lovely. Some fan better fucking Photoshop this and send it to Rivers immediately. I want to see that construction of human. I want to see what he's to, what woman he's talking about. It says she had Barbara Streisand's nose, Liberace's smile that drives men wild, and oh, Barbara go. Streisand's nose. Wow. It's like a very confusing and song. To the tune of beat, of beat It with the <laughs> cadence of Monster Man. <laughs> this guy just loves beauty. That's this right. This guy Look. just loves everything yeah, yeah. he thinks is beautiful. That's right. Yeah, yeah. He can Thighs and hips <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of, of legendary players. Yeah. He yeah. will love all of you, but he'll find a very specific thing to illuminate <laughs> and look for another person. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> That's the beautiful thing about this guy. Uh, but yeah, tor- towards the end, Terry Funk starts just uh, kind of freestyling on this end. Guitar solo is pretty ripping. Oh, hell yeah. That was nice. Barbara Streisand's nose. (laughs) It is like a monster match. The the original song apparently was Lance Russell's nose, who was the announcer for uh, for Memphis wrestling. So Jimmy Hart wrote it as that, and then he got to Japan and was, was like, like, "Let's just change it to something that yeah. people will know." They probably know Barbara Streisand. People yeah, in Japan won't know Lance Russell, but they'll know Barbara Streisand. <laughs> but anyway, that rules. That's good shit. Yeah, oh, I, no, 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 no. I like it better than that. What was that? There's one called "Beat It." Yeah, yeah I fuck "Beat It." Dude. I don't like that at all. Uh, that's good music. Well, there, there's two others. I hate when they sing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of like when they just talk. Yeah, just talk yeah. on top of an awesome uh, guitar riff. That's all I want. Yeah. Well, there's two others I wanted to mention uh, with the last one, of course, being oh. my my favorite and a song that we have uh, spoken about on the show in the past. But uh, this is, uh, again, Terry Funk is 40 years old mm. at the time of this recording. My age. And, uh, you know, if you're going to write a song, <laughs> obviously you're going to write a song called We Hate School. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
at this point, yeah, I have to look back at my youth and, and say no. Yeah. We hate school. I have we PTSD hate it, from school. Still, <laughs> I've got a. Yeah, I read a whole uh, concept album about we hate school. Well, that's <laughs> so. that's what this track is called. This is we hate school. Yeah. Oh, ooh, I like that. Oh, this is like Drop King Murphy's. <laughs> <laughs> Departed, dude. Oh yeah. You don't like my music. You don't like my clothes. Oh, he's rapping. He knows what the rubber hoe. I wear ho, you bitch ass. Because we hate school, but we love rock and roll. Oh, okay. So, Damn. first, first, we hate school, but we love rock and roll. Yeah. I'm a hundred years old. First line is he says, "My teacher don't like my music, and she don't like my clothes. Up your nose with the rubber hose." Damn. Welcome to that Carter reference. Right. Yeah. And I want to point out. Well, Welcome back, Cotter has been on the air now for like six, seven years, so that's got to yeah. be uh, pretty outdated. Oh, my God. Uh, and then he says, I'd like to shove her where the sun don't go. Damn. I was like, like make her. Yeah, it doesn't. What? Um, Take someone the balls is what that phrase is <laughs> right. going for. So I don't, you can't shove sh- her where your balls go. I mean, yes, you can. I'm but shove my not. teacher up my own ass. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm going to make her disappear into my ass. That's how much I hate school. <laughs> yeah, that's how much I hate school. She didn't understand my clothes. <laughs> well, yeah, this is as good as the wall. <laughs> Certain parts of the wall that sound is like so this. Funny. <laughs> Uh, when I come home, I uh, turn my radio on. My mom also my sucks. Playing my favorite <laughs> song. Yeah. My mother yells, get off the phone. I knew it. Have you done your homework? Is that radio on? <laughs> homework. Have you done your 40 homework? Years radio old. On? 40 year old man in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't figure out how to make phone rhyme with on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's right there. You could have just changed it slightly. It's, uh, yeah. He's like, I read the lyric sheet, man. I'm not worried about it. Oh, this is one <laughs> take, Sudi. Yeah, no shit. That is part. That is funny thing about it. It definitely is all one take, right? Oh yeah. For him, I mean, they're probably rehearsing and you know. You yeah, no. The band has worked on this <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. forever, so that he can just <laughs> forever, just... so that he can just walk in wow. and fucking do one take and get the hell out of there. Yeah, two hours in the vocal booth and yeah. home forever. But there is one song on here that is so fucking good that I think that they could take this sample and do something with it today, uh, and that is, of oh, course, yeah. the uh, the slow jam. Uh, so do y'all know what uh, Rapongi is? <laughs> no. So uh, oh yeah, definitely. Oh, fuck no. You ever smoke Rapongi? <laughs> no. oh, oh man. Oh, you go, after this, dude, we're smoking Rapongi. Uh, so Rapongi <laughs> is kind of the uh, sleazy district of Tokyo where they have lots of strip clubs and lots of bars, and specifically, it's where American expats go mm. and so all the wrestlers <laughs> who would go <laughs> you, I, I already know it's where <laughs> creepy boring. white guys yeah. just go to bang <laughs> Japanese uh-huh. yeah. yep. yes and lose your innocence on these streets boys <laughs> it's the American and, way and all these wrestlers <laughs> who would go over to Japan in the 80s that's where they would hang out. Mm. And to this day, wrestler, there's actually a, a tag team. I don't know if they're still around. I feel like they maybe got back together not that long ago. They're called Rapongi Vice, you know? Yeah. And uh, that's kind of their personas. They're like shithead Americans that hang out in Rapongi. You know? Grand Theft Auto City. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Straight <laughs> up. Liberty City. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to it. That's yeah. <laughs> uh, so there is a track on this album. It's track six, and it's called Rapongi. Oh, that's nice. He's trying to appeal to the, <laughs> the locals. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, he's, I've been. He's with their culture. <laughs> I've been in Japan. I go down to the horse street all the time. I heard a whole song about it. I know about your life. Uh, But yeah, this song, legitimately, I I love this song. Easily his best uh, vocal performance, which is to say he's barely trying. Yeah, yeah. Talk singing works great when you slow it down. Well, I'm sure he has a passion about this subject (laughs) that he didn't have for the others. But it's yeah, all. But it's also. Experience. It's not like the other songs. It's pretty mournful, and it's just about like regret and just being, uh, you know, filled with uh, emptiness. Damn. And, but sung by a uh, a guy who kind of sounds like Hank Hill. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's listen. This is my favorite track on the record, "Rapongi" by Terry Funk. Oh my God! Get it going. So, this is some Playboy <laughs> Channel this, music right here. <laughs> no, this is vaporwave. <laughs> This yeah, is right. what those vaporwave totally. motherfuckers, when they think they're listening to mall music yeah. from the 80s, this is, this is the platonic ideal of vaporwave. I mean, yeah, this is so cool. And then... <laughs> the double track vocals. <laughs> Trailing behind the lead vocal. <laughs> Willie Nelson. people want me to play Watching all the ladies go dancing. <laughs> See the 
Oh. On their hands. This thing. Oh, oh yeah, all right. While they're dancing, they are really romancing. Cause you know they want to <laughs> be with their man. What? <laughs> what? They're really romantic. In American cigarettes. Oh, finally Drinking something to rejoice. Drinking hot sake, but I still can't forget all of the times that I should have said I love you. <laughs> now, this solo is so good right here. The sax guy is like, you know what? Fuck you. I'm going crazy. Yeah. Oh, dude. Night court's open, baby. Look, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're taking cases. Judge Sexy presiding. Ooh, SNL, Newcast SNL. <laughs> Fuck you, G.E. <G>. Smith. <laughs> Fucking let him know. Dana Carvey. Yeah, Mike Meyer. <laughs> Uh, and he keeps going. That's the best part. Oh, yeah. He's like, he's like, like just do it. I don't want to sing. You just go play shit. more of that. <laughs> I like you, young man. Just go fucking crazy. Well, I mean, in the studio, they had to have been thinking, like, how do we get him on this song yeah. the least amount that yeah, we could possibly get him uh, on? Saxophone player was like, I can rip this shit whenever he needs to. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the back of the chorus. Cigarettes. <laughs> Drink Drinking the cheeseburger <laughs> in bed. <Yeah. laughs> is, I love lyrics like this. It's just like any idiot could just uh, fucking spit out some words. Yeah. Like a twelve-year-old could have wrote this exact song. Oh, no, well, like, <laughs> like, like I said, like, Jim, Jimmy Hart got famous when he was very young. Well, there so you go. He was a twelve-year-old. A twelve-year-old smoking did. American cigarettes. Uh, <laughs> well, I smoke cigarettes. No one talked like that. It was uh, way cooler. Man. So, no, uh, hey, can I bomb yeah. an American <laughs> cigarette? I, no, not an American spirit. <laughs> Just any <laughs> cigarette yeah, from right. America. Yeah. Let's have a cigarette. Boy. <laughs> like, well, this is sick. I'm going to join the army. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. So, man. Uh, that rules. Cl- cult classic. And I Respect had. Respect for the dead. I legit. <laughs> had a, I, <laughs> yeah. You're the worst singer in the fucking yeah. world. You no. kicked ass at wrestling, bro. But singing. But let's talk about something you sucked dick. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. He did not. No, I, I, I will argue. That's what I want to be remembered. No, I will argue he did not suck at this. He absolutely came into it knowing his capabilities full well. Oh, he yeah. handled it like a genius. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Being like, this right is thing. money. <laughs> yeah. I don't want my friends or family to know this exists. And he took all those precautions. And uh, mm-hmm. and how do I come in way under budget? And <laughs> yeah, the rest, just like yeah, a yeah. This, just like a fucking pro <laughs> musician <laughs> does. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is a rousing success. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah. and it sounds good on top of that. It's so good. His, his voice is not the greatest, but he never said it was. They came to him. It's yeah. like this is one of those great things about. And it's you know it's why I always say like the best thing I've ever heard is that line in Ghostbusters where some. Someone says, Ray, if someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes. <laughs> and that is exactly the way I kind of think about any like weird opportunity I've gotten where I if I have a moment's doubt, I'll always think back to that because it's like, hey, guess what? If you hire me and I suck at this, you know whose fault that is? Totally. Fucking yours, not mine. Totally. And so in this case, this is an utter success of that philosophy where they came to him and like, Terry, do you want to do this? He's like, I can't sing. And like, we don't care. He's like, all right, if you don't care, I don't fucking care. And they managed to put out awesome. pretty fucking good stuff. This so, is what we lost. That was anyway. not pretty good. <laughs> Let's be honest. No, <laughs> yeah, Rapongi's yeah. good. The rest <laughs> of it's uh, yeah. mediocre to bad. Yeah, take uh, the vocals off and uh, yeah, give the sax. Well, props. and you're in luck because the last track in order to fill some riddle? space it's just the first track but with no <laughs> vocals <laughs> so, oh wow yeah. i'm surprised they didn't put that intro over they're like goodbye to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know like he was here and he left the like, world <laughs> champion yeah, the big, if uh, began that way why not end yeah it? so anyway r.i.p to the proprietor of the double cross ranch terry Damn. motherfucking funk Rest in peace, brother. You are one of the greatest. And uh, all, yeah, and, and check out that episode. I did, me and Pat talked uh, talked Terry Funk and Bray Wyatt for like two hours. It was fun as hell. And Pat obviously is a he's a funk scholar. He went to <laughs> Funk U. And uh, Bootsy Collins was his teacher. No, yeah, it's yeah, a different kind of funk. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, yeah. Shout out to Terry. R.I.P. You know, there's a movement. And it's a very, very funky movement. Yes, it is, Rhodes. There's a funky movement because you see, I have got my fans. You 
egg sucking dog. Now I want to say one other thing is that I am the Florida State champion and I am here not to just be here for a short period of time. I brought my truck down. I brought my trailer down and I brought my horse down to Florida and I'm moving here roads and the movement has started and it's going to end in Hollywood. We have a segment on the show called Top 3, where we get our listeners to write into us with top three lists that they wish us to populate and opine upon. First up, this one comes to us from our friend at Orfish Fever. And uh, boy, I had to go through a big list for this and came away with the most basic fucking Same. list of all time. I know what you're going to say, because I'm yeah, I, too. Yeah, anybody who knows me knows what I'm about to say. But the question is, top three Canadian bands slash musicians. Yes. So I've got a bunch of honorable mentions, but I'm going to run through my top three uh, very quickly. No, <laughs> I've got a bunch of honorable mentions. This is called the top three. I'm looking at his honorable mention list. He's got about a top ten going. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I have them, I have them there in case somebody doesn't say them, because okay. certain things need to be addressed. Yes, uh, I agree. There's some people on the yeah, that don't quite make the top three, but uh, no, number three. And, and some you just forgot about. Some people you just forget are Canadian. Totally, oh, absolutely. Totally. Yeah, uh, but yeah, my uh, my top three. Uh, number three, and this is a fucking great band that I did not know about. They are like legendary Canadian bands. I only became aware of them a couple of years ago when I hosted the Waverly Boogie down in Waverly, Alabama, and they were the headliners. And I was like, oh, and they're called the Sheep Dogs. Oh, interesting. And they fucking kicked ass. They were so goddamn good. And I was texting a friend of the show, uh, Richard Eden, up in uh, Yukon Territory. And I was like, hey, because I knew they were big in Canada. And he was like, oh, man, I'm so fucking jealous. Those guys are, you know, massive up here. So they are one of those, like, That's awesome. well-kept secrets in Canada. But I got to see them. And before the show, got to meet them. And they're the sweetest dudes ever. But, man, if you get a chance to see the Sheepdogs, they put on a fucking amazing concert. And their records are great, too. Great band name. So, yeah, I wanted to shout them out. Number two, basic as hell, the band. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's mine. Yeah, yeah, you got You got to mention yeah, the, the other bands. two basic people. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. we got to. You got to go basic bitch on <laughs> you gotta this one. Got to go basic yeah. bitch. Yeah, yeah. Good. no, no choice. I mean, if you want to exclude them for the fact they had one American guy, then sure, you can yeah. you can swap in other people from the the last waltz film. But uh, yeah, mm-hmm. we'll go with the band. And then number one, basic as shit, easy. Neil Young Neil is Young. the guy. Yes. Last night, I got a chance to see uh, Fleet Foxes and My Morning Jacket at the Hollywood Bowl. Uh, they covered Expecting to Fly together. Uh, Robin Pecknold and Jim James on stage using their beautiful ass voices together to make that shit just pop. It was great. Awesome. So I was listening to uh, Neil Young tune just last night at the Hollywood Bowl. So hell yeah, that's that's my top three. I've got uh, I've got some HMs, but uh, we'll go around. What do you got, Seth? Well, it's Neil Young, the band, and Joni Mitchell. There you go. Joni, um, Joni's in my honorable mention. Yeah, I obviously. love Blue, but I really love that album, uh, The Hissing of Summer Lawns. This is a record not a lot of people know, and that's- it's so fucking cool it's like straight up drug music it's is like that, when do is it that sounds like, like a fiona apple record it's like insane there's when, all these crazy instruments going when did, on when did that is that late 70s it's late 70s yeah okay yeah. That's and like, the album like, cover she painted and it's this really cool fucked up weird like suburban like neighborhood with like a creepy snake thing yeah, through it. yeah it's yeah, fucking yeah. it's a really cool record and the song the hissing of summer lawns is like proto fiona apple or bjork or anything like that yeah. it's like yeah, it's so cool. So, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, she's the folk lady. It's like, well, her shit is pretty wild. And you get I, further into her records. I like, am a huge Court and Spark fan. Yeah, Court and Spark rules. And, and that, that's the same time. Same my years, favorite but, Joni yeah. Mitchell song is on that record, and it's mm-hmm. Car on a Hill. And yeah, she's got the I'm fucking, the title, speaking so. of sax. Yeah, yeah. You know, she's got the she kicking sax. fucking yeah. saxophone. Yeah. Fuck. I, I mean, you know, I think, what, yeah. I think what the people are learning is that uh, if you've got a saxophone, you have my undivided attention. Absolutely. But yeah, that song fucking kicks ass. That's my favorite Joni Mitchell song, but... Uh, uh, yeah, obviously, Blue and Ladies of the Canyon, fucking yeah. incredible. Neil Young goes without saying what his good <laughs> songs are. I think everyone yeah, yeah, fucking knows. Millions the, of them. The band, I am going to self-promote my bullshit, though. So I did make this really cool. Well, I was lucky to be able to make it is why it's really cool, not because I'm fucking cool. Uh, I, the, what I made is up to you whether that's really cool. But um, Wow. Yeah, I thank think you. Cool. I don't want to see you. this. There's so much self-doubt <laughs> in this pitch. Look, I forgot it's Hollywood. Listen, <laughs> when I walk into a fucking room, people start talking, and it's Seth? fucking fun. For the history Seth, of America. Seth, are you a god? I am a god. Thank uh, you. Yes, I am a Kanye West fan, so don't, don't think. <laughs> I am a god is a normal phrase in my life. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, 
so yeah, I was going to say, so Bob Clear Mountain is this incredible engineer who's recorded with every single important like uh, rock artist from the 70s and 80s and stuff yeah. and the 90s. Like He still does really prestigious mixes for everyone that's huge. Uh-huh. All the remasters of stuff, Bob Clear Mountain's like a huge name in this. He's yeah. sort of like Steve Albini for like, for like classic rock doors. Oh, okay, right on. So anyways, I got to interview this guy about remixing uh, music from Big Pink using Peter Jackson's fucking AI technology he made to get back oh, to shit. separate the vocals. Whoa. And so, like, let's say, case in point, Levon Helms playing drums and singing on the weight. Yeah. You can hear the drums the whole time because it's underneath his mic. Like, there's no way yeah. not to hear the bleed, right? Right. So this technology allows to fill in these spaces and separate. Shit. So he, and it's for Dolby Atmos. So there's, like, you know, 13 goddamn speakers it's, it's going Dude, to. I'm seriously waiting for them to do this to, like, the Robert Johnson. And oh, the they're Sun going House, to. All yeah. that old well, and also, shit. The, I think this software would be available to people just to fuck around. And yeah. really, all yeah, the yeah. shit should just be to fuck around, not necessarily to sell product but yeah it's great for messing around and so but he played for me and i filmed this i made like a little short doc about the remixing of music for big pink for yeah. dolby atmos and they put it out in the band's official pages and stuff Fuck. so if you go to youtube and just type in the band bob clear mountain it'll be the first thing oh, that's so cool but i directed that thing and interviewed him and it was a fun really fun time because he fucking loves music he loves the band he's known robert or he knew robert robertson for like 30 years which recorded. he just passed too he passed like yeah. yeah like a month after i did that thing. yeah so it was weird because yeah. he was being like yeah robbie and i were on the phone you know so he's very controversial recently. man yeah well yeah yeah anybody who ever picks up a fucking guitar unfortunately is flawed and confused. well but, <laughs> but him but, yeah. especially uh it's, oh is that right yeah because you know like uh, uh leave on helm famously uh, uh yeah, on, in his book <laughs> just ripped him an, yeah, a yeah, new yeah. asshole an aggressive man in general and seemingly all all of what Levon had to say about Robbie was backed mm-hmm. up when they released a documentary called We Were Brothers, colon, oh, yes. Robbie Robertson and the Band. Yes. Where you're like, like, this is the legacy crap that people do to maintain paychecks for the rest of their life. Uh, yeah, That's the sad thing. That's what it comes down to. Is you're like, I got to brand that shit we did together as my shit. Yeah, which it's we're like, all dying. <laughs> Let's, I want the most money on the way out. Let's be 100% real. <laughs> yeah. Fucking Robbie. Yes, Robbie, you wrote the songs. You composed yeah. some of the songs. Yeah. That is Rick Danko, Richard Manuel, and Levon Helm's yeah. fucking band. They're called the band. You know what I mean? You are the Bernie Taupin to yeah. their Elton John. Sure, yeah. yeah. Sure, yeah. yes, you yeah. had a giant yeah. contribution, but fuck off. Yeah. Robbie yeah. Robertson yeah, like, and the band. Die. Yeah. Fuck shit. off and die. I'm, yeah. just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I never you're met You're off the list. <laughs> fuck yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Bob Clear Mountain, if you're listening, I know that you were friends and I respect our private conversation. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. But, but either way, if you want to see this cool thing I made, that no, that is, rules, is dude. an example of my stupid work. Work, my great, brilliant work, my godlike <laughs> God work. Like uh, work. <laughs> yes, yes, I will lie to you directly and tell you it's brilliant. Go to YouTube and type in Bob Crew Mountain, the band. I was very lucky to do that. And yeah, Canadian We'll, we'll put it in the show description. Yeah, cool, so cool. Yeah, click yeah, on it. Yeah, I was really retweeted yeah, and stuff. Really lucky to do it. I'm proud of it. What do you got, Sam? Okay, so I think first and foremost, we need to acknowledge the weekend. Oh, oh is I didn't say it would be the wild card here. Great. <laughs> the, shit, Tur- is he? I didn't know he's he was from Canadian. Toronto. No shit. I believe. Yeah, I believe. he's in that show, The Idol. You might. It's a wow. great TV show. <laughs> no joking. shit, it's, dude. It got yeah, canceled. The weekend. He is an elite yeah. pop star of the current generation. Give him the props. Give him the props. He deserves it. He's got a bunch of good songs. Super yeah. Super Bowl halftime show. I like yeah. some of it. Yeah, I like that was some a, of it. His Super Bowl halftime show was a banger. And you know what happened right after that? Yeah, was our, our man Carter was on the Colbert show right after oh, that. That's, right. So that's oh, a magic yeah. night, man. He had a great Super Bowl yeah. Sunday, Carter. <laughs> Fuck yeah, <laughs> he Sunday. did. Um, so yeah, the weekend. Mm-hmm. The week. yeah. Yeah. Props, good work. Um, and I'm going to say two people who are not on the list. Mm. Two, <laughs> a lot of people, their general demeanor and behavior has them off the list. Tory Lanez and Drake. Sorry. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was yeah. Right, you're you'd out say of here. Drake. <laughs> no, nah, Drake's too much of a song thief, a uh, style jacker. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I see that. Uh, he's a, allegedly a groomer of underage girls, likes to text 16 year old girls, apparently. There's something uh, odd going on there. Um, <laughs> yeah. Why don't you just sing about cocaine like the weekend? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing Drake does, but it's because someone else wrote it for him, yes. yeah, which yeah. is even more peculiar. <laughs> uh-huh. um, How did he become such a fucking icon? Well, he was he 
released one popular mixtape, and then from there, uh-huh. I think really smartly used his management and money decisions to start yeah. using Ghost Riders. Well, and he was on a big TV uh-huh. show, and he was, he was really a, like always doing interviews. He's always been very camera yeah. friendly. He, he has yeah. gone to every big rap city in America and left with their style, <laughs> and then did like a whole album of like Miami style, Memphis style, Atlanta style. You're right, Houston. Style. All yeah. those records are like weird genre rips. He, where it's like this one's a dance disco because he's yeah. from Canada, and I, I don't want to diss Canada, but they're <laughs> this is the place to do it. Their their rap and hip hop music's a little different there. They don't yeah. have as much as a, a style to take from as yeah. American. You telling me cities. snow isn't a style? I know <laughs> there were so few rappers, like Canadian rappers, that are successful. I was yeah. really surprised. Well, and Drake, I should say, was a child star. Yeah, for you sure. You know, an actor. Yeah. So yeah. he had like that little yeah. leg up. So people a, were aware of and him. And I guess people think he's attractive or something because he like, mm-hmm. licks his lips. He's like an LO Cool J. <laughs> yeah. Sort of like. Well, he's turned himself into like the total pop star. Yeah. Coro is He's on roids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's doing it all. And Tory Lane's just a classic piece of shit. Oh. We don't yeah. need to discuss uh. him. <laughs> I like you brought all this pain to the list. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing is that's if good. these good guys work. weren't bad, yeah, yeah, they yeah. would be fucking two, sure. three, one, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tory Lanez can yeah. sing. Drake yeah. has yeah. a presence, whatever. Yeah. Sure. He's a, a important. But self, they're on the honorable Andy. mentions of pieces of shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, let's go with some non-rap. Let's go with Alanis Morissette. Yeah, oh, that's fuck the, yes. that was like the next under the yeah. three for me. And then, well, real quick, I have something to say about Alanis Morissette. So if you're visiting Los Angeles, there is a secret rich people beach at 31350 oh, yeah. Broad Beach Road in Malibu. I Everybody did. go I've there. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, me and Sam went out there uh, during the during the Panini. It was a good old time. It's beautiful. Yeah. The first time I became aware of this, I was doing a tour. I was with some people from New Zealand, and it was the best day of tours of my life because we had two days together. First day, regular day, took them to all the sites. Second day, they paid me to pick them up at their hotel take them to a surfing lesson at this beach for five hours and then take them back to the hotel. So I just sat in Starbucks for like four hours and watched movies on my laptop and got paid. I was the most expensive Uber driver in the world, yeah, basically. No but we get to this beach and it's like a surf spot and it's, you know, it's these huge houses on the beach and uh, but it's kind of like a little obscure cut through where you can just get right through and the two surfing instructors uh, not joking were named Stingray and Stony Tony Stony Tony <laughs> and they were no, like listen to Stony they Tony. were a fucking <laughs> it was his information's all it, they were like they were like cartoons <laughs> like it was literally like you know you gotta accept the energy of the wave brother Feel like the flow straight up yeah, like they come with the beachside property they <laughs> sounded like Ninja they, Turtles they give you a Ninja Turtle yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it'll help you but what they told me and again, this information is coming from Stingray and Stony Tony. So unconfirmed if you go to this address. But they told me that they were like, yeah, man, the house on the left is uh, Alanis Morissette's beach house. She's fucking cool, man. She lets us keep our surfboards under her deck when she's not home. I was like, oh, that's Whoa. cool. And he goes, yeah, this house over here is Pierce Brosnan. And he's kind of a fucking asshole. <laughs> I, heard, like, I heard he was in a Whole Foods and someone was like, he was acting like a total asshole. And they're like, yeah, it's fucking Pierce Brosnan. Really? See, it's yeah, funny because I've told, I've told some know. people this and they're like, oh, he's really sweet. I've heard. But I, who knows? Depends on what kind of my friend in Austin used to be a waiter at some restaurant. Pierce was in town doing a TV show or movie or something. Oh, yeah. He forgot a pin, like a a fancy fountain pin. (laughs) And my friend kept it because he went to the restaurant often. Then he gave it back to Pierce Bros and gave him $100 and said, oh, my wife would have been furious if she found out I've lost this pin. All right. But maybe he just did it to be nice because his wife was going to be so pissed. Yeah, yeah. yeah they find out he <laughs> has no wife. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's just a weird hey, British if, dude making if you up have, If you have a Pierce Brosnan yeah. story, tweet at us at the good spot. I bet but he's all right. Anyway, point is, Alanis <laughs> Morissette. It's easy yes. to not like surfers. Let's be honest. We need yeah, to get yeah. Jared yeah. Levin on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he, sure. he is a 100% genuine, sounds like that, yep, is yep. a surfer is dude, grew Ninja up Turtles. in SoCal. Yeah. Has a more interesting life than any of us put together. Oh, sure. I and let's be honest. Where's here. his podcast? Yeah, Go listen yeah. to his podcast. Stop Dude, that's the podcast. thing about a guy like that. He can't get it together to have his own podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's on a wave. He's got no time, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's got so much sand in his shoes. I can't deal with dot wave. I've got <laughs> wave, real waves. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Alanis Morissette, uh, re- reportedly props. awesome. Yeah. That's cool. 
And then let's go with uh, just a song I like, Jane Child. Don't want to fall in love. Wow, her hair is fucking amazing. She was an influence to many women in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, you're right. All right. Oh, yes. It's a bop. This is way better than a Terry Funk record. Right <laughs> <laughs> hey, now. I mean, same genre. But <laughs> you're a wag sucking dog. <laughs> yeah, that's what the vocals sound like. And I think the main difference is Jane Child did uh, yeah. write this entire oh, yes. song and play almost every instrument. Oh, wow. She wanted too. to be here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, man. I love anything that's got that little oh, breakdown with the chime shit. Man, her that scent. Her hair is outstanding. It's teased up. She's got extensions. She's oh, got the, whoa! She's got the nose. She got to, Star Trek: The Next Generation yeah, nose the chain. Nose chain to the ear. <laughs> wow! Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is dope. This is good. This is going on the playlist mm-hmm. now. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is really showing you how vocals work in a song. <laughs> Where it's like, yeah, here it comes. Yeah. Take us there. Oh yeah. Wow. Okay, but this was pro- not produced by Canadians, probably, right? Uh, well, I was going to say, <laughs> she's this, Canadian. She, she made yeah, the whole fucking she made song. song. Yeah, this is like uh, like Canadian Janet Jackson. Yeah, kind it's of? exactly. Yeah. Paul Abdul, that whole era. Fuck yes. Yeah, this rules. Hell yeah. I've never heard this before. Yeah, but this is good shit. This is very good shit. I want to rob a bank for this song. <laughs> well, that's perfect because this song is featured in Grand Theft Auto V. <laughs> <Is it>? Whoa. <laughs> yeah. No shit. Oh, it all comes back to GTA, baby. I mean, it does. St- it sounds like stealing a cigarette boat. Absolutely. Miami Harbor and just fucking yeah. got yeah. into people And this down. song's just yeah. playing on the radio oh as soon God. as you get in. Yeah. Once yeah. you've gotten away with some crime and you're driving your car, <laughs> this should be the song you're listening it's, to. It's this in Susudio by Phil yeah. Collins is the next track. Yeah, do your cocaine oh. and drive as fast as you can. Yeah. You're free. Oh, man. <laughs> So this is a banger. That's an eighty banger. Fuck you really yes. fucking, you brought the A game there. We yeah. Neil Young. I was going to say. I'm, I'm, fucking... l- I'm lucky I found out she was Canadian at one point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, right. Otherwise, you'd, yeah, you never would have. Yeah. Uh, my other shout yeah, outs. Work. Shania Twain. <laughs> Shania Twain. And uh, the Nashville. new pornographers and sure. their subsidiary uh, bands. Oh, yeah, uh, you know, AC Newman and Destroyer. Mm-hmm. I saw Destroyer last year. Oh, They're yeah. fucking amazing. Dan Behar, somehow one of the most functional alcoholics in the world. Is that uh, right? Right. It's crazy how drunk uh-huh. he still is. Like, because we used to see really? him in like the mid two thousands, and he would just be like Heineken in hand, just like swaying and still putting on an amazing show. Man. And then we saw him in L.A. I was like, damn, he's still drunk. Mm. <laughs> I guess if you never stop, the hangovers <laughs> aren't that bad. You just keep fucking going it's every day, wild, so man. it's yet to be like he's just. I'm fifty and it hurts. Uh, <laughs> like, he he's just stopped. like <laughs> fucked up, just doing art at you. Oh, yeah. it's amazing. I love his, the destroyer is crazy. I yeah, like, I like everything I've heard. Yeah, but yeah, I wanted to mention Feist and Katie yeah. Lang and. Uh, Katie Lang, yeah. Uh, Katie did Lang anyone say Rush, or is that just yeah. so obvious? I got Rush on there. Yeah. It's too yeah. obvious. Yes. We all left yes. it off just because it's obviously. Yes. It's the number zero yes. in the top three. Yes. It is. Yes. And yep. no one really, like, people love Rush, but it's like songs. Yep. The people who are obsessed with them are, you know, a certain kind of person. Yep. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. The Slo- type of person that leaves a YouTube <laughs> comment. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yes, go right to the YouTube comments now. <laughs> we'll yeah. see. But yeah, Sloan, April oh, Wine, yeah. The Weaker Vans. Yeah. So a lot of good shit out of Canada. Here's good stuff. Just not as good as us. America <laughs> rules. What up, dogs? Try to catch up with this America <laughs> shit. <laughs> so uh, anyway, shout out to at or fish fever for that great question. The next one here, uh, MJ Pratt writing in from Instagram. And this, this one should go quick. Top three most overrated spots in LA. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like this is also like you guys have lived your way longer than me, so it might be easier. Now, I, see, I was going to say you're, you have a bit yeah, fresher you, eyes yeah. on the situation, so maybe yours would be a but little sharper. See, I lived in Nashville for so long that just about fucking anything is worth it for me. <laughs> so it's hard to say. <laughs> but I'm like, overrated? Fuck yeah. that. I had to go to fucking whatever. Yeah. Like, well, well, it's easy. You could just be like Hollywood Boulevard. That's well, a that, slam dunk. We'll see. Yes. The, the thing I was yeah, going to say easy. about Hollywood Boulevard is that Hollywood Boulevard is so universally reviled mm. that I... It's, it's almost, like Rush on the Canadian band list. <laughs> it's just there. It's yeah, almost... It's in our hearts, but still. <laughs> you know what did it for me was I read an article last year that voted Hollywood Boulevard as the worst tourist attraction in the world. Sure, because it's and not anything but nothing. a road. There's it's nothing. not an attraction. <laughs> but that yeah. distinction for me almost loops around to make it like 
it's like the room. Uh-huh. You're like it's so bad. You're like, yeah, but it's kind of great because it it's so yeah. depressing and horrible yeah. that you're like, ah, there's just something. It's yeah. got a, it's got its charm because it has no charm. Yeah, and uh, for me, it's my fucking neighborhood target. That's I mean, true. That's, uh, so yeah. I'm just going yeah. there to buy say, shit all live, the time, and I'm like, <laughs> you're a two block walk from yeah, that motherfucker. It's, yeah, it's ridiculous. So like to me, I'm like, oh, I gotta go to Target. Like the quickest, easiest one is like Hollywood <laughs> Boulevard, and then there's people <laughs> just like staring at the sidewalk. Oh yeah, just yeah. stopped oh, yeah. in the middle, yeah. just being like, yeah. wow, it says Shania Twain. Uh-huh. Yep, it's Sh- really, and there's always like some dude on a megaphone or someone shooting a music video, yeah, yeah. and or, the girls like dancing the street while there's no or a guy like the light doesn't change or something dressed as C3PO going fuck you bitch yeah (laughs) Yeah. exactly it's it's insane but all the stores and everything are you know in TCL I go there all the goddamn time but I but I never am on the main drag standing outside for some reason I'm trying to go inside because you're not selling CDs or tours yeah yeah totally so Um, yeah but I have I have it it means something to me because it's where I go buy my fucking yeah, stupid hell yeah. potato chips or whatever, yeah. frozen pizzas. Yeah, um, but yeah. So uh, for my top three, I was just thinking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was thinking of things that uh, you know either had a long line for no reason or just places that I fucking hate having to go. Yeah. So obviously number three, Pink's hot dogs. Yeah, I've never been there because everyone told me it's not worth it. Uh, it's, so much. If there's a short line, sure. Go, okay, yeah. okay. but it's a still at the end of the day, it's a hot dog. Pink's hot dogs for those that don't know, it's yeah. the corner of Melrose and La Brea. It's been there since 1939, and there's a giant fucking line. Yeah, always. and Pretty you know, much. it's one of those fam- places that's famous because it has a line and it has a line because it's famous, mm-hmm. and that's kind of it. Yeah. But I will say the funniest thing about Pink's Hot Dogs was uh, during uh, the original run of Jackass, uh, th- when I became aware of Pink's Hot Dogs was Brad Pitt was a huge Jackass fan, and he contacted <laughs> Johnny Knoxville and Spike Jones was like, I want to get involved. Do Let's do a prank. Mm-hmm. And so they did a thing where Brad Pitt is standing in line at Pink's Hot Dogs, and everybody is, this is 2000 Brad Pitt, so he's the biggest fucking yeah. star in the world. And obviously everybody in the line is just like, Holy fucking shit. And, you know, they're like people, tourists with, you know, this is before cell phones, obviously, but they have people taking pictures with them and shit. Anybody that had a camera, huge scene. And then I forgot, I think it might be Pontius and Johnny Knoxville pull up in a white van and, kidnap and they him. kidnap him. And Brilliant. he's like, hey, get your hands off me. And they put it, throw him in a van and just drive away. That is so fucked up. And somebody across the like, street. Whoa, he's like us. And he gets kidnapped. <laughs> he gets kidnapped like, oh, fuck. Fuck. They did it another time at a movie theater, like That's waiting in line. Oh, to, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome. So anyway. I've driven by there a million times, but never eaten there because everyone told me it was over. I went so there, I believed it. I went there once. Hey I guys, like, if you're in the LA area looking for a hot dog, go to Larry's Chili Dog fuck in, yes. Burbank. Yeah. in Burbank. Yeah. Burbank's or you're, where all the good or stuff you're is. a dumb fuck. If you <laughs> yeah. want to eat Americanized gross food, Burbank is the best <laughs> oh, place yeah. to do it. Burbank rules. Yeah. I love Burbank. Yeah. That feels this like home. This is guy. not going to be it. Burbank's not on the list <laughs> no. for anyone. Hell no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Burbank, yeah. dude, the best bookstores, the best fucking serious. Larry's Easy Parking. Larry's Chili Dog mm-hmm. is one of those places you go in. There's pictures of Shaq on the wall, Jay Leno on the wall. They're yeah. there. They're eating the Chili yeah. Dog. Hell yeah, yeah. yeah. People, the food's good. It's cheap. It yeah. really is no good. fucking line. Yeah. Places yeah. to park. That's awesome. Uh, but yeah, my number two, just overall, the city of Beverly Hills. <laughs> uh, as a tour guide, I go there every day, and yeah. every time it feels so compulsory uh-huh. because like I love my job. I love talking about the city and the history and just you know movies and bullshit. Yeah. Like it's yeah. the perfect job for me. But then when we it comes time to show people the six fucking mansions that I show them, I'm just like, ah, just it's the only time where I'm like, I want to die. Because uh, I drive I, through Beverly Hills all the time, and it's it's pleasant to drive. Yeah, through it's pleasant to drive through. Trying to like. I don't know. Like, but then like specifically like and then you go to like Rodeo Drive, especially yeah, where like a lot of a, a lot of the groups that I have or, you know, they're like from the suburbs, which is fine. Yeah. But they'll go to a place like Venice, which I think is touristy, but in the right way. Yeah. Because there's enough just crazy, just different shit that you don't see anywhere else going on there where it makes it worth it to go even as yeah. a local. Yeah. But then like Rodeo Drive, I'm like, they're just as big a freaks. They just happen to have totally. money. Totally. <laughs> So. I also think it's funny. It's like Pretty Woman, like Rodeo Drive, and it's all super close ups. Because if you yeah. were pulled out to a Y, you're like, this is a fucking street. It's right. one. It's one block. <laughs> it's yeah. it's yeah. just a fucking it's street. Tiny. But they're like Tiffany's, or when they like show these close ups of places, and you're like, wow, it must be just overwhelming, yeah. like a Willy Wonka of yeah. stores. Like it's not. It's a one fucking it's street. What, and it's, it's not what, that nice. Ro- Melrose <laughs> yeah. is what people think Rodeo. Is. Yes, yeah, yeah, 100%. yeah. Exactly. Melrose is yeah, a right. uh, string of clothing shops and uh-huh. uh, all sorts of stuff. Basically, it's where uh, kids or 
young adults who couldn't afford to go into a club yeah. hang out during the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what <laughs> that's I was saying. I always say to true. my groups, I'm like, Melrose is Rodeo for people under 20. Yeah. yeah. Which like, is the only place you want to be. Right. Anyone over 20 is a moron. But yeah. But yeah, my. Uh, <laughs> it's a great place to get shot. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, my number one, and this is just not even yeah. a fucking contest. Sorry, Carter. Oh. It's West Hollywood. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Just Carter lives there. The dread that fills my fucking mind yeah. when I'm doing a show there or uh-huh. I have to go there mm. because the parking situation is so yeah. fucked Parking's and brutal. also you're just like it's it is so not for me mm. in terms of just like places to go because everything is just like the loud music and yeah. the bullshit so I'm yeah. just like give me fly, where's the old man bar it's where definitely a yeah, place right. where like any of us would go and be like why does any of this need to exist right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what <laughs> good does this do for yeah. anyone yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well it's like that Whole Foods parking lot to me is the best part of West Hollywood because you're like they always got an attendant there it's easy to park you <laughs> talk in the parking lot all you want you can go to the that's liquor a, store the that, burger place like. that, the burger place that's literally as far into West <laughs> yeah. Hollywood as I'll that go that is West and, Hollywood and that, is, that parking lot. That's the that is the border. That is barely <laughs> yeah. West Hollywood. I'll go yeah. there because there's a parking lot. Yeah, yeah, Other yeah. than that, fuck you. That's why I go. That's like the only part of West Hollywood. I'm like, ah, I'll go to the Whole Foods. I, I drove Lyft else. for like three months, and every like Saturday night, the only <laughs> way to make money doing that is basically shuttling people from Hollywood to West Hollywood. Yeah, dropping people off at the Abbey. The worst fucking people in the world. Yeah, people say that bar just, is like just, the tourists are getting your phone stolen and all sorts of horrible yeah, shit happens. So there. I've I realized like some people listening to this maybe. If they're wired differently, then that would be your shit. But for yeah, me, yeah. The, yeah. The, a nightmare scenario is going to something in West Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> so. West, so when people are like, LA is full of fucking fake fucking douche. <laughs> right, back, right. They're talking about West <laughs> That's Hollywood. Totally, they're talking yeah, about. totally. Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, yeah that's my good. top those three. What you got, Seth? Uh, things I wrote down. Okay, Jones, uh, you know, uh, that, that restaurant Jones in West Hollywood. Uh-huh. Uh, everyone's like, oh, it's so cool. It's so hip. And like, yeah, it is hip and cool in there, but the food is like really pricey. Uh It's not very good. And you're crammed together in these tiny places. And like, like Formosa Cafe is a way cooler place to me. And Jones is across oh, the yeah. street. Yeah, yeah. And but everyone's always like, "Oh no, Jones is so great." So like, maybe someone's like selling cocaine in the bathroom up by rolls. But I, I, I have yet to experience why it rolls. <laughs> and I've been there like three or four times with other people and been like, "This is like not that fucking special." I don't really I get, do not get what Jones. it is. Yeah. I mean, it looks cool inside or whatever. Kind of. I don't know. <laughs> I don't like, know. I guess if I'm Timothy Chalamet or some shit, it must be awesome. It's like it's dark in there, and I can still talk yeah. about the Beatles or whatever. And, <laughs> yeah, we yeah. can talk to three a.m. about the Beatles. Hey, I don't know what it is, if, but if there, if we could talk about the Beatles till 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd be there. But, there but, yeah. So Jones, which hurts to say, and then this really hurts to say, but I'm going to preface it by saying they have an incredible schedule and they they show nothing but great movies there. Uh-huh. But <laughs> the new Beverly, the oh. Quentin Tarantino Theater, which I love very much, uh-huh. I love it very much, and the staff's awesome place. I was going to say, you basically live there. I love it. I love yeah. the place. <laughs> but... Honestly, I like Los Feliz three more. Oh, uh, but American okay. C- Cinematheque does, you know, American Cinematheque is maybe a little more akin to what I like. Uh, they play sort of like forgotten sure, favorites or sure. a director's catalog or something. But New Beverly rules because it's cheap as fuck. Yep. The double features is like a one of a kind experience. Like getting to see how a director directs a movie is what those are all about. Yeah. You watch one movie and you're like, oh, that was awesome, or it sucked or whatever. You watch the second one and you're like, oh, it's awesome. Why is it awesome? And you can really start to see what yeah. they did with a similar theme, you know? And yeah. so it's really a, a wonderful movie-going experience. The thing I'm going to shit on is their matinee screenings. Uh-huh. And here's the reason why. They are generally really beloved movies that are quotable. Uh-huh. And the people in the theater oh. will not shut the fuck uh-huh. up. Okay. And I have seen do- like a dozen movies now where this has happened. Okay. Where like it's about to be a line, and then the person behind me says it. And it's that way for two fucking hours. Right. Whoa. So it's kind of a great. I've wanted to go to some of those matinees. I'm it's like, oh, I go see Starship Troopers, but then I never yeah. go do it. They're gonna be like, got them. The bugs are splat or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> you're like, shut the fuck up. So it's kind like, of a great band, bad fans yes, situation. Exactly. Yeah. And, and the reason why I say overrated is because people always talk about that theater and they're going like, oh, if I lived in L.A., the New Beverly, like, yeah, the New Beverly rules. But there are people who go there, like any place, that make it hard to enjoy sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And specifically. Specifically on the matinees because that's when it's like fan favorites. I saw it after uh, yeah. Beavis and Butthead do America. This oh, guy yeah. just walking around to anyone whom he made eye contact 
trying to talk with. No one was interested. Did he have his shirt over his head and go, like, I'm the great Cornholio? As soon as, as soon as the movie ended, he stood up and said a line from the movie. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and then right. everyone was like, you're the coolest. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, who are you really? We all liked it or we wouldn't have bought the tickets. Like, right, right. It's a revival. Like, of course, we all liked the movie already. Yeah. But, so I yeah. definitely have, when I've been there, I was just like, God, I hope that guy doesn't come anywhere. <sighs> yes. Yes. And then there's also like four of that dude, yes. at least. Always. And they, and they, okay, there's this one guy who fucking cackles inappropriately. Like he laughs his head off because he's seen the movie so much or something. Like I went and saw Elevator to the Gallows, which is a film noir, but has some comedic elements in that everyone is sort of a fuck up and they keep sort of making mistakes. And uh-huh. so that's kind of the fun of it. But this guy, like, you know, he's like, oh, I, okay, great. I got away with the murder. I did all this. Oh, fuck. I forgot my keys. And the guy's like, ha, 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 just going nuts. And you're like, I agree internally. We're all like, oh, you fucked up. Like, God's laughing at you. Sure. Yeah. What are you doing, dude? This yeah, is yeah, a quiet yeah. movie with Miles Davis to the fucking soundtrack. <laughs> and the movie is comedic, so I'm not saying it's completely off tone, but it's yeah. like, it did not stop. And he's just cackling. Uh, and you're like, you're the only person in the room that's enjoyed it like that. Yeah. You must be out of your fucking mind in yeah, some yeah. capacity. <laughs> like, but anyway, so that's happened numerous times. And yeah. it's like we saw Valley Girl and, and every 80s song came on, the guy behind us singing every lyric oh, in my God. fucking ear. Shut yeah. up. And Holly finally was like, hey, can you please not sing? Just don't <laughs> sing along. Yeah, like yeah. that was the way she put it, which I thought was smart. And she's like, hey, just don't sing along. You can talk whatever, just don't sing. Because then it's like, look, if you're going to talk over me, that's one thing. But if every time there's a fucking music cue, you're right. going to be like, ooh. That whole movie it's, it's is like, just music doing? Doing? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so I love that place. I'm not shitting on it. Sure. I the people involved, they're wonderful. They do great stuff there. Yeah. You can't help the psychos who come to the place that yeah. you built. Like there I'm, are some psychos. I am there. sure <laughs> I'm yeah. sure widespread panic is a great live band. Exactly. Yeah. I will never go because I don't want to get in a fight with a fucking yes, opioid bro. Totally. Yes, yeah. totally. <laughs> but yeah, I will say the last thing I saw, there was a third man and this guy sat down next to me and I was like, oh, he seems like a normal little man. <laughs> no. Whatever. He pulls up his phone and just starts watching a baseball game at full volume with his phone. <laughs> I was like, holy fuck, are you, how long and how long are you going to do this? And he did it until, you know, the guy came and presented, but it was like, you haven't thought at all that the guy next to you might not want to hear at loud volume what you're listening to? Like, yeah. what's wrong with There's so Some many... of the people there do not understand yeah. social situations. Yes. Yeah. So that <laughs> kills it. Sometimes it can yeah. kill it, but I'm not just shit on this wonderful, beautiful yeah. business that we I totally it. support. I wanted to go. I've still never seen Hateful Eight, and I was like, oh, they're oh, yeah, showing it. They're showing it fucking Friday at midnight. That yeah. movie's like three hours I long. Know. I know. And, ma- and I was like, imagine the kind of freaks that are at the <laughs> New Beverly at 3 a.m. They're all those people I'm pointing out. They yeah. all come back yeah, together. oh, yeah. definitely. As a secret society of Having morons. Having nothing to do for that long a yes. night in L.A. <laughs> yep. yep. Oh, uh, God. Well, did, Sam, did you do your... Yeah, I was going to say, what, what what's you your got? overrated L.A. Yeah, what, what uh, you got, Sam? I'm like Rivers. I'm, I'm a total hater. I'm not even going with establishments. I'm going with whole neighborhoods. <laughs> <laughs> Taking them all down. The rules. Could we... Is uh, Am I wrong that if we got rid of everything in Silver Lake, it would be no major <laughs> loss? Oh. Am, am I wrong about that? You're not entirely wrong. No, no yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I'm fucking not. Yeah. I, I will agree I think Silver Lake is you, a bit much. You get all of, all of the Silver Lake stuff is just the same in Echo Park, but it's a little bit better, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Echo Park at least still has some charm to it, yes. but Echo Park also still sucks. Yeah. Echo, <laughs> like, oh, where do you want to go do punk rock Pilates at? <laughs> Echo Park. <laughs> That's the place to go do oh. punk rock Pilates. If Elliot Smith knew this, he would have killed himself oh, way, yeah, earlier. Yeah. way earlier. Joey if he knew. That's where it was going. would have vomited <laughs> in your face. Um, Just kidding. Yeah, Echo Park also is like on the edge of being like a useless neighborhood where yeah. it's just like it's expensive restaurants that aren't good uh-huh. and it's people that uh, shouldn't be living in L.A. because they're <laughs> well, they should be living in West Hollywood, but they want to pretend like they aren't that rich. So they live in a just as expensive place in Echo Park yeah. or Silver Lake. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, I'm just saying I like Echo Park Lake more than Silver Lake. Oh, definitely. You Echo it, Park's yeah. better. I yeah, don't want to yeah. full. It's half of Echo Park. Sure. We need to get rid we, of. We got two it, lakes the in this part state. of town, and that's the better of the lakes. <laughs> it's so. The gorilla yeah. mind state. Yeah, Echo yeah. Park. <laughs> that's really the problem. Yeah, Silver Lake. All right. Um, yeah. Silver Lake. What was the other one I was going to think of? Half of Echo Park. Let's go with that. <laughs> the, the part that has punk rock Pilates. <laughs> yeah. We'll get rid of that part. That's which unfortunately, line. I hate to say, it's a real thing. Hot goth oh, yoga. <laughs> yeah, it's God. a it's a thing. You, it, you know how Pilates is fucking lame and for suits, <laughs> for corporate yeah. fucking shills, yeah. dude. We're gonna yep. we're doing it to Gang of Four. Fuck oh my you. god! 
Uh, I'm trying to think of a restaurant that's just mad overrated, but a lot of them are pretty accurately rated here that's in LA. That's true. All the restaurants people told me have been amazing have been fucking amazing. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Like how people say go to House of Pies. It's pretty decent. Yeah. yeah. Red 62, pretty decent. Decent. Mm. Yeah. Mad decent. A lot of a lot of places, pretty decent. I don't know. There's a lot of just random burger places. They're yeah. like, we put pastrami on top of a I burger. Know. Yeah. And then Smash you go, burger they're culture. Never, they're never yeah. good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. you, the hat. <laughs> yeah, like places uh-huh. like that. Uh-huh. I don't know, but there's a million places like that. Right, right. They're just like Rick's Burgers or totally. LA's Best Burgers. Yeah. It's just like, we put shit on top of a burger that shouldn't be there. <laughs> yep, yep. I Ice guess cream for me, I like it, but Tommy's chili burgers. Oh, sure. The chili they use is disgusting. Yeah. If you yep. get their burger without the chili, it's fine. Man. It's like a classic <laughs> burger you grew up eating. Flat, frozen patty. Yeah, <laughs> about this. Oh, it stays yeah. at the same size as the it's bun. Good. It doesn't shrink uh, up at all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Brief fuck you to Jameson Pub on Hollywood mm. Boulevard. Uh, oh, I've never been there. Met up there uh, just before the show just to get a drink, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna get a. They have prime rib sandwich. I'm like, it's an Irish pub. The prime rib might be decent. <laughs> oh my god! It was straight up the steak that we I used was to put. Say a, the it, steak it was, prime Yes, rib. it was steakums <laughs> on a fucking disgusting like bun that was just like falling apart because it was way too stale. I was like, okay, I guess they're on Hollywood Boulevard. So they don't have to impress anybody. Nah, it's all they're tourists, just giving but, drunk people. But they did have something that is really gross. That uh, shout out to a friend of the show, Blake Hamilton, ordered, and I heard him order it. I was like, I'm gonna get one of those too. And it was a peanut butter shot. <laughs> And I was like, okay. So I was thinking it was one of those things that you see on like weird mixology TikToks where they're like, oh. if you take limoncello and rum and mix it together, it tastes just like Dr. Pepper. It was just a bottle. It was straight up peanut butter. Yeah. Flavored. And no peanut uh, butter and rum like blended oh. to shit and it was like chunky it was like a melted like uh, peanut butter milkshake what? and it <laughs> was like lukewarm year old's idea of alcohol it was like, so this is gonna kick when, ass. Dude, when drake's talking to a 16 year old he's like <laughs> he's like you gotta try the peanut, peanut butter nah, shots you, yeah you might like peanut butter and jelly dude. but i'm peanut butter and rum <laughs> no. you ain't lived and it was so funny <laughs> literally you've only been alive me and, <laughs> you ain't lived like i me and Bla- like i was looking at it and i like sipped a little bit before I actually like did the shot. I was like, oh, oh my God, it's like kind of chunky. And so me and Blake oh. were just like, you know, we were like, all right, cheers. And we yeah. did the shot. And Blake, his first reaction was so funny because he goes, Man, I must have been really fucked up the last time I got this because this is horrifying. Like, <laughs> he thought like, it was good as shit. Yeah, I was like, yeah, like, it's because you were wasted. You're like, up ah, new drinks over like, here. Oh. It's oh. uh, when you're so drunk you literally can't taste anything. Oh yeah, everything <laughs> yeah. is delicious. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> special shout the out blood to blood in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, mm, never again. Just yeah. certain areas of town just blow. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> All the areas you've heard about that people are like you got to go to that area. That's the area that sucks. Yeah, it usually does. Yeah, yeah. I like living in Hollywood and that's people are like Hollywood's horrible it's like well I live on the edge of Hollywood and it's totally fucking normal and fine and I have access to a bunch of different places <laughs> but people are like you know like Oh, like, like you live in East Nashville. Why wouldn't you move to Silver Lake? I'm like, well, I fucking hated East Nashville. It's just all the hipsters like poured out into a neighborhood I already lived in. It's so. a, hipster isn't even <laughs> like, the right word anymore. No, it's, it's not. It's, it's a whole nother. It's yuppie kid who yeah. wants to pretend like their parents aren't rich. That's right. And they will spend so much money to do that. Yes, yes. And then they will talk about how they're broke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, oh, I love it. Man, well, uh, yeah, that was a fucking amazing question. So yeah, shout good work. out to our friend MJ Pratt for writing in. Reminder, if you come to LA, 31350 Broad Beach Road, Malibu, California. It's a rich people beach. I want as many fucking yeah. cool people on that beach because it's wasted on those fuck second houses. Yeah. 31350 it, Broad <laughs> Beach it's Road. It's a legit legal yeah. public it's, access. It's public too. access yeah, and so the it's beach in trouble. is yeah. fucking gorgeous. I spent almost awesome. every like every day that I could make it out there during COVID, that's what I did. I just walked on that's that beach because awesome. it's fucking, I saw whales out there. It's incredible. It's fucking gorgeous. Oh, what is your mom like, doing out there, Seth? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Damn. Beached whale. Uh, yeah, you store your shit in Atlantis Morissette's beach yeah, house. Yeah, Atlantis whatever. is fairly cool, according to Stingray and Stony Tony. So anyway. Uh, <laughs> Stingray and Stony Tony. <laughs> the new shitty Ninja Turtles. <laughs> we just added them for the new movie. Stony uh, Baloney. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, shout out to everyone who wrote in. Uh, we'll be uh, doing more of these in the weeks to come. If you have a top three list that you wish Wishes to populate and opine upon, please zeet at us at the Goods Pod. I hear my reality static on my radio, and the tubes they glow in the dark. 
And I'm there with her in Ensenada And I'm here in Echo Park I'm a leader, hold me tighter I think I'm sinking down And I'm all strung out on heroin On the outskirts of town And I'm all strung out on heroin On the outskirts of town Ooh. Fellas, we have time for just one more segment and of course this is our jam of the week <laughs> you better be terry funk again <laughs> yeah yeah i'm like God, well yeah, we're really we are we are going down to texas uh, oh, of course I'm sure uh, the only comments on those videos are like Haha, i can't believe this exists <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no one's like i love this song <laughs> well there's a lot from the last week been like r.i.p legend <laughs> so. okay so what is this well, I'm gonna oh listen this it. is reveal itself to me this so. is oh we got billy gibbons we got frank beard we got dusty hill this is ZZ fucking top of course. with Give Me All Your Loving. Oh, yeah, this is good shit. This oh, is yeah. good fucking speeding down the highway music. This is early air MTV yeah. when they would still put ugly people on MTV. No shit. They got rid of that pretty quick. You know, everybody on these comments is always talking about, like, oh, this is when MTV used to play music. I'm like, no, this is when mm -hmm. ugly people were still on yeah. MTV. They continued to play music for a yeah. few, like a decade after this. They're in fucking no. Back to the Future 3. <laughs> no, you don't understand the comment means they started playing music by black people. People. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it was not music. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, no, this is 1983. This is the year they started uh, playing music by black people because this is the year of Thriller. So, wow, yeah. You know, is that right? This is when they were made to start doing that. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, this is from the 1983 album Eliminator. Walking A. And this song, of course... Uh, Oh, man, just oh, fucking great, dude. I, I, I unapologetically love ZZ yeah. Top. Even this era, you know, I, I like Trace Hombres. I like your, your Rio Grande uh -huh. Mud, yeah. uh, you know, your early shit. But There's man, nothing wrong with them. 80s stuff. No, they're right. Rocks, yeah, too. Yeah, my dad my dad was always a fan. And like I said, Back to Future 3, I mean, come on. They spin the fucking guitars yes. and they caught them. Yeah. Uh, come on. And the guitars are furry. <laughs> this is all I wanted as a child was yeah. to spin a and guitar doing the, with a beard. And doing the point. Oh, man. How fucking, fucking cool. They had gimmicks while they were fucking rocking. so many gimmicks. Yeah. It's incredible. Uh, and they'd already been like a huge band for like 10 years going into the MTV yeah, era. Totally, so, yeah, totally. Yeah, very impressive. But uh, yeah. It this, is cool shit. You hear it. It even sounds like it's got integrity now. And there's been so many ripoffs of this kind of shit. Oh, hell yeah. It still sounds cool. Like the production sounds cool. Guitar Absolutely. Sounds fucked up. Cool um, when you hear a generic blues song, this is what they're going for. Yeah, exactly. Yep, yeah, yep. yeah. Uh, well, yeah, this song sits at 163 million views on YouTube, 13,385 comments. And y'all... <laughs> I sat at Panera Bread this morning and read every oh, goddamn no. last oh, one of them. How long did this take? Oh, it, it took all morning. And you know what's funny? Oh. <laughs> no, I don't give these people this kind of I, Well, here's the reason. <laughs> Panera Bread unveiled a sugar-free charged uh, lemonade. It's a oh. blood orange. <laughs> I thought they already had that. No, all those were fully sugared. This is Whoa. their, yeah, so, and, uh, yeah, so, anyway. Charged it, up listening to this I, shit. Oh, I'm still <laughs> charged, dude. I'm so fucking charged right now. Uh, uh, but yeah, so let us now dive down into the comment oh, yeah. section. This is going to be very of, step daddy. Give me all your loving. <laughs> this is going to be when that bitch, I said, fuck that. <laughs> I love pussy and no one's going to stop me from being the champion. Boy, <laughs> so cool. Seth, you are so goddamn close to the it. first comment. This kind of music can't uh, help, can't help uh, a you, bad, you, a psyche that's gone just, too far. You, you have intuited the first yes. comment to an unsettling degree. I grew up in Madison, Tennessee in the uh, early early 80s folks so <laughs> i know what this is so <laughs> our first comments on youtube this comes to us from doyle perkins three years ago hell yeah holly's dad i'm a straight arrow from la Pussy is my religion. <laughs> ZZ Top are my high priests. Fuck. That's what I'm talking about. That's why it's yeah, crazy. Yeah. So he's not God, but he prays to the pussy God. Yeah. <laughs> he's a, he is a pussy God, but he's, he really gets down on his knees and respects it. Uh, <laughs> all the guys who get the most pussy comment on YouTube <laughs> yeah, while they're yeah, shit-faced yeah, drunk. <laughs> <laughs> all uh, these Playboy channel subscribers are like, fucking A, man. Those were the days. Uh, fucking free cologne samples and <laughs> pussy by the ton. And you're like, what? Well, that never happened. For you. Uh, Amanda Long, <laughs> SB2 Howl from 12 days ago. Mm, my, children, my children weren't planned, but I love them. <laughs> 
Aww. much like ZZ Top. <laughs> you know, Aww, what playing. a nice comment. Well, I mean, like yeah, it's nice. You know, uh, that's all it says. Uh, it's all it says. Wow. I've decided, even though though these be bastards, oh. I've decided to love them as if they were legal legal angels. <laughs> Twelve days ago, she was like, yeah, "I love them." <laughs> I guess so, but <laughs> like, it took me a long time to get here. <laughs> Less than two weeks. You're like, you know, this I, song came out in 1983 when they were born. Uh, it <laughs> took me a while, but uh, I finally arrived at loving them. It's so great how they're 40. <laughs> Like live journal or whatever. It's, they're just like, <laughs> I went to work today oh, and it was bullshit. Oh, yeah. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. Sanga <laughs> never went away. It yeah, just like, moved here. How do you sign in the account to even <laughs> type that shit out if you're that brain dead? It's just insane. To me. Uh, Tina Patton from two years ago. <laughs> Swaller or spit. Y'all can bet you Texas tight ass britches. Them hot britches pump. That dirty young dude's tires so damn hard till his oil filter bust clean across the yard. That dirty young dude. <laughs> Quote, <laughs> deep south, good old boy. Now get in back and fixin' your leaking trunk, you little wet punk. <laughs> wet punk? It's a really weird uh, fucking insults to throw at someone. You dirty young man. You yeah, yeah. Wet- what the fuck? I think she's talking to the guy in the video who's working at the gas oh, station. Oh, because that is with the video. Yeah. Oh, so she's watching the YouTube video and being like, oh, she horned I'm a live, uh, live, yeah. yes. live comment on 100%. this. A hundred percent. Absolutely. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, I remember the music video for this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, XYZ DNA from two years ago. <laughs> XYZ DNA. <laughs> Fucking hey, That's Ooh. like a G.I. Joe character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck the 80s. Oh, <laughs> nobody gives a fuck except me. Not a fan. Okay. And oh. you're just blind as a bat as far as I can see. No one gives a fuck If not, me. call me. The volume is not on, so you're part of this shit as well. You putting old people in nursing homes, sad what these hustlers do. That time is going down. No need for hustlers in a better world. She says she won't lose because she already <laughs> lost. <laughs> Tear me, bitch. <laughs> he, he asked, when is the future? So he wrote, the future is now, February 19th. What on earth? <laughs> okay, so some indicators here. Yeah. Uh, he's talking about the volume not being on. So, And then he mentions nursing homes. I'm like, are they playing this in the day area of a nursing oh, home? And he's this like, guy turn was it def- up. This guy definitely was sold to a government-run nursing <laughs> yeah, home exactly. by his family. I love zero context for his experience. Oh, he's yeah. just like, this <laughs> sucks and... Wow. <laughs> Dude, I, the way you read YouTube comments is so fucking funny. Because you always come in really hot, and then the midway through, you get a little heart. And then that's it, you're like, and you know these old folks? So it's like you changed tones so around, like you, you settled into their insanity. Uh, I want to like, turn, turn the chair around and <laughs> yeah. sit in it like, uh, you know, like Slater. Yeah, yeah, you're like, he's actually quite calm. Let him just get in the first couple words. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, Velther from four years ago. Okay, sure. Please give me the name of the fabulous blonde in this video, dressed in black and white and exposing her divine legs. (laughs) Exposing her divine legs. The (laughs) splendid pillars of her holy sanctuary. Wow. She she, (laughs) It's holy sanctuary, though. Everyone, (laughs) we pray to the pussy gods here. (laughs) She haunts my nights since the first time I watched this clip. Thanks for your help. And Damn. I'm like, no one give her her, wow. her the name. I wish this I could is, be that affected by any piece like, of media ever. This is like a classic <laughs> Pornhub comment. What's yeah. her name? Does anyone know exactly. her name? <laughs> give me the name. Give me the name, Eli. Give me oh, the blonde. Uh, give me the name. <laughs> that is so, that uh, is just the fucking, I love it. I just love, God damn. If you could live this free to where you just go to YouTube and go blah, 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 <laughs> with all your inner problems and sexuality hangouts. If, we, if we could see woo. a profile picture of these God, people, yeah. oh, I know. we wouldn't be like, like, oh, if you could live that free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy's just fucking, yeah, he look, he's been living so free. He's yeah. fucking half dead. Uh, oh, this guy, man, this, oh. guy, this guy's going through it. I can who from two years ago. Okay. My friend and I had a car accident a week ago, and I was driving. Oh, no. <gasps> the airbags exploded and a flame shot out from them. Ooh, that does <laughs> that actually does happen. I know. And I turned the radio <laughs> up. Yeah. Well, like, he says, hey. I got out of the smoking car. Lights were on. Smoke was coming out from the car. And this song was playing. The devil took a ride with us and jumped out of the car right after the crash. 
<laughs> I wish I could believe things like that. Yeah. I really want to be that man. Or confessions <laughs> of a drunk driver. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. God damn, the psychosis. I just like how th- this is the second song we've now had where somebody was talking about like a extreme auto accident that they walked away from yeah. with smoke in the background. And like, and it was cool. They weren't like, it yeah. sucked, my friend's dead, yeah, and yeah. I, I've got to pay it's a like, lot of money. Like, and- nope. It was like an action movie. I was badass. Yeah, the devil jumped out, man, because we were too badass. (laughs) The devil's name was Jack Daniels. (laughs) Yeah, I got out. There was a woman in white stonewashed jeans, and I was like, "Woo!" we did the point, and then they put the cuffs on me because I'm a fucking moron. (laughs) That one will never speak to me. (laughs) Uh, Got a few more here. Super James McCluskey from one year ago. (laughs) Super James McCluskey, shout out. Okay, let's see if we have something. Super James. Super. Super James. <laughs> this is fine. Super James. <laughs> James. Okay, it's ready. Super James. Okay, let's get playing. James McCluskey, your friend. James. <laughs> Let it roll. Fun day. You should re- read this to the rhythm of the song. He could be yeah. going for something. Uh, you're right. Let's see if we have something. Super James. Super James. <laughs> yeah. Super James. This yeah, is fine. Super James. Super James. James. <laughs> James. Yeah, yeah. Super James. Super, James. super James. <laughs> super, super <laughs> James, too. Oh, yeah. It is better. <laughs> <that way. laughs> I agree uh, with this guy. <laughs> super, <laughs> super, <laughs> super, <laughs> super <laughs> James. <laughs> super <laughs> James. Let's see what's happening. Oh, Super James. Uh, uh, that rolls. It's like you. when you sing a song to a dog <laughs> and all the lyrics are changed to the dog. Absolutely. Yeah. This is mostly what I'm doing with my time. Yeah, yeah, I'm mostly doing that. Uh, What's his other... I mean, I know you can click on it now, but do you assume that his other comments are him just saying Super James and shitload like that, or is uh, that just one time we, where he You can't it? search for comments on YouTube. No. Oh, oh, yeah, you can. You can? I found a way, my friends. Oh, what? Yeah, dude, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a Chrome extension that I found. <laughs> and <laughs> It's always a Chrome and extension. And you can load up all these comments and then just type in anything you want. Holy so, so oh, wow. what I started thinking about, because this is like a recent <laughs> discovery, what I was thinking about is I want to try to like do a new game where you try to guess the over under on how many times Justin Bieber is mentioned. Mm. Because on these old classic rock songs from like 10 years ago when Justin Bieber was hitting, everybody is so fucking furious that he's like a star. They'll just be like, fuck Justin Bieber. And it'll be like all caps. Sure. He was so, just like Britney Spears or whatever. Right. Right. About and culturally. He yeah, was yeah. holding ZZ top back. <laughs> right. Right. Well, cause he's the, Canadian. He, he would exceed their view counts. You Ooh. know what I mean? And they'd be like, why does Justin Bieber have a hundred million views? And ZZ top only has a million. And you're like, cause I love that. His new and more kids yeah, are on YouTube than old people. On what are you, you talking about? Yeah. 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 I love the other. It's a travesty <laughs> that this thing from 1946 isn't as well loved as this thing from 2023. <laughs> well, uh, kids these days. Makes sense, though, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, we got, we got some more horniness here. James Kindle 9168 oh, yeah. from six years ago. I love it. Everybody knows I'd drink the girl in this video's bathwater and not even use a chaser. <laughs> <laughs> he was going to have a Diet Coke after he drank her bath water. Z- <laughs> He's so fine. He doesn't need it. I don't even need that Diet Coke. <laughs> ZZ Top sometimes poses as space aliens, but that's just our little lie. Truth is, ZZ Top is way rad. Yep. It's news I can use in everyday life. They're from Texas, but it's useful in Los Angeles. Like a boomerang. I need a repeat. Hit me with a ton of lead. <laughs> Yeah, these are my dudes ever since 75 or so. This does just sound like an L.A. burnout. Yeah. You won't stop talking about the rock days in the uh, 80s. Oh, this is Tony Tony for sure. That's how he orders a drink, too. I want a boomerang. <laughs> yeah. I need it right back. What do you say? I need a repeat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this, this one I just I want to... a re- peanut butter shot. Leave the <laughs> yeah. bottle on the table. <laughs> Keep them coming. Crunchy. The, this one I want to read the comments and then the guy's name. Uh, this is from nine years ago. Gosh, these women are sexy. Once again, I'm touching myself. And the, <laughs> and, and once again, uh, once I'm on again. YouTube well, with my hand in my pants. This is my diary every page. Just once again, and I'm the touching guy, myself. The guy's name is Andy Miller, perv. <laughs> wow. Well, it's his brand. So yeah, he's just, so he just, gets off on posting yeah, just We just helped him yeah. come a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> once again, I'm coming. Uh, and finally, your tutor from three years ago. Oh, teach us. Teach us all. <laughs> I got t- I got tickets to a ZZ Top concert in Stockholm, Sweden. Fun. I was 20 or something. 
I forgot my glasses. Something. Uh oh. <laughs> he goes, I forgot my glasses, but the hot little mama I took to the concert had tits like two bass drums. <laughs> so Ooh. I took a look at those titties instead. <laughs> and I said, no thanks. Yeah. Like, did he take a look at the titties? He's like, he took a look he's at like I can't see the concert. So he's just, and I imagine him being like two inches from the boobs. Just oh, like. Oh, Stockholm yeah. Syndrome. I'm farsighted. <laughs> I, need, I can't. They're blurry. <laughs> That's yeah. what Stockholm Syndrome is, dude. <laughs> he says, so I looked at those titties instead. Just a short little story from a second lieutenant as I was in those days. <laughs> and then he says, <laughs> and then he says, in those days, Sweden had a defense force. But today, I'm old. Sweden's asleep. No more defense. No rock and roll. No big tits and no fun. <laughs> Shit! So wow. So there's old men in Sweden <laughs> who are also mad. Times have changed. <laughs> I love yeah. that he's like, I'm just going to share this little cute story about going but, to CZ. I'm going to go when like, I eat Sweden. <laughs> the Swedish army hasn't meant shit since like the 30 yeah. years war. It's amazing. Like, what is he talking about? He's like, oh, Sweden doesn't have, like, why do you guys need a fucking army? And he's missing the war, baby. Close yeah. enough to run. I mean, the yeah. sure, yeah. sure, I Real suppose. Real men had a reason to live back then. Yeah, yeah. Titties and guns yeah. and warfare. Yeah. I, I, when the polar ice caps are totally melted and, you know, a lot of seaports open up. Uh-huh then yes, they will need defense. But for now, I think you're just chill, man. Mm. You'll be dead by that time. But anyway, that's your tutor from three years Ooh, ago. Nice. Make Sweden's weak. <laughs> yeah. These motherfuckers <laughs> got no clue. <laughs> they used to hang their titties out. <laughs> 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 All right, well. I also like how how American scumbag this man is in his second language. It is amazing. It's really impressive, actually. Well, you like what you like. You, you're PC people. <laughs> right, right. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, so white white trash transcends, you know, there, oh. there is that underwater mountain range that connects Appalachia to uh, to uh, uh, Great Britain and then up into Scandinavia. The most fucked fantastic. up part of this is he says Sweden has gotten rid of big tits. Yeah, I was like, that what? That is what terrible. The fuck are, well, yeah, but also, what Can't are you talking true. about? Yeah, what true. are you talking Rivers, bring up Pornhub. I was going to say. Sweden. <laughs> Right Sweden now. titties. <laughs> Swedish <laughs> titties. <laughs> yeah, there will be more than one video. Oh, man. Well, uh, yeah, shout out to, uh, we have a listener in Sweden, so shout out Anders. Hey, and, uh, yeah. Let us know about them titties. Yeah, let's what know. do you think? Let us know. You see them? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How's it been since they banned titties? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Must be rough growing up there, dude. I get it. Oh, man. Well, that's uh, ZZ Tops, uh, and that is our Jam of the Week. Seth Dalton Pomeroy, Thank where can you. people find you online? <laughs> you can find me on, you know, X, I guess. Fuck <laughs> because yeah. He's seen, he's seen I have folks. threads, but it's like, I don't I can't like bring it. myself. I don't like the format. You see everybody's comments. It's They should have just stole the direct format. Why are, Why did they make it their own? I think thing? they wanted to change it enough at first so they can't get sued, and then they're going to just slowly step just out. Just go yeah. back. Yeah. This, uh, this I, is like, I just think that if they, I don't think they're going to now, but mm-hmm. if they do have this fucking MMA, fight it mm-hmm. should be for twitter yeah no shit like put it on the line bitch like yeah. if you think you could beat mark zuckerberg if you think you could beat that shark-eyed fucking american psycho <laughs> then put it on the line yep yeah yeah, yeah. i'm anyway. there in the bloodbath i'm right. using x i don't know i'm not really using threads but follow me there if you want yeah seth pomeroy at that end that and instagram uh seth pomeroy just my name hell yeah sam where can people find you on the internet instagram sam harder 666 tiktok and twitter Slam Harder, YouTube, LA Comedy Life. That's it, I think. <laughs> threads, I'm also on there. Yeah. But I don't use it. If Threads made it. a notification that was like, okay, here's how the algorithm works on Threads. Yeah, I'd probably yeah. use it. Yeah, they gave you a, <laughs> right now, I'm totally lost on yeah, how it no works. Purpose. How do I game the system so people see my fucking comments? Yeah. 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 Uh, well, yeah, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Blue Sky, and Threads. Still have not posted on those last two, but maybe someday. I'm at Rivers Langley. You can follow our show on Twitter, at The Goods Pod, every episode ever, and new clips and classic from the last 10 years of this podcast dropping all the time at <laughs> you YouTube. Felt every year. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. <laughs> YouTube.com slash the goods pod. And uh, oh, well, you could come see me do stand up at the Build Space in Altadena with Guy Branham, Chris Fairbanks, Ed Greer, Aaron Lampart, and more on uh, Friday, September 29th. That's going to be a real fun show. And you could support our show in the best way possible by heading to patreon.com slash the goods pod. Second best way to support this show. Head to Apple Podcasts, rate, review, and subscribe. Show the attitude of gratitude because if you do not have the attitude of gratitude, we're going to make you see strays in theater yeah. a bunch of times. <laughs> you <laughs> egg sucking dogs. <laughs> 
The Goods from the Woods was recorded and edited by me, Rivers Langley. You can find our show on Twitter at The Goods Pod. Our theme song was composed by Jonas the Space Cowboy. This was a Brain Freeze podcast.